Welcome everyone. We are back. It is time. It's that time. You know what it is. We got big guests, big names, big prizes. Matt Waxman joining me today. Matt, how are you? I'm doing well, Jeff. Thanks for asking. How you doing? I'm I'm excellent. Listen, your poker resume speaks for itself. There it is. Over four million in earnings. He's won WPTs. He's won bracelets. He knows how to play the game. And one of my very close friends for basically since the beginning of the poker journey. So pleasure to have you here. Of course, GG Millions, episode 29 of season 2023. And as we always say, big names, big prizes. But today, some of the best to ever do it. We are going to be seeing some royalty for poker online in particular. We'll take a look at some of those names. There's your man, David Yan, who is Yan Yan, however you want to say it. Guy's a crusher. He is in the number one spot for the GG million rankings right now. There's the prize pool today, seven figures, pretty standard to expect with the marquee name in the game, the GG millions every week, 10K buy-in. Final table played on Tuesday, pauses Sunday, and of course, a look at what we're playing for. 286,000, Matt, on a Tuesday. Online poker, pretty special stuff. I mean, this was the, the marquee prize back in the day when we were grinding on Sundays, but this is just a... You know, a Tuesday afternoon, 9 and 132 remain. We're going to take a look at the final table. Curious who you have played with from this group. Some big names here. Anyone stand out for you in this lineup? I mean, I'm looking at these names, and I I see them some pretty impressive resumes here, but uh, I think I need to see some faces to know if I played with any of them. Because just by name, I don't, I don't uh, think I recognize any of them. That just shows you you're a live guy. You're a live pro. You've been out of the online scene for a while. But this is Nicholas Ostet, maybe the king of online poker. One of the seriously, I mean, he is, he might be, I think he's the number one all time earner. He's definitely got a ton of titles here. Pavel, also your chip leader. He was just here, I believe, last week and he has scored very well. You probably, you played with him live for sure. He's won some big stuff. You look up his name, you'll recognize him. I know that. And again, so many familiar faces. Thanks to everyone tuning in. We are going to be playing to a winner. And as normal, Austria and Brazil representing the final table. We got one Austrian, two Brazilians today. Pretty standard stuff. Ivan Luca, also one of those guys that just gets it done. One of the best to do it. And uh, we're in a treat. Pablo Silva playing top of his game. Seeing the Brazilian, very tough player who is constantly deep and in striking distance. So pretty exciting final table. He's obviously got a three bet here. Going to... Go ahead and attack Matthews open as a very strong holding. We can do a we can do a, a little wager if you want. Dinner wager, Matt. We're in the same area, zip code, but we just got to catch up recently in person. But if you're up for that, we can do a little draft with the audience. Give them something to play for. Give me a fifty or hundred dollar sweat as well, and plenty of giveaways today. Are you up for a dinner wager, Matt? I'm in. Let's do it. All right, it's a nice dinner. I'm, I'm, you know, I get, I bring Amelia. I'm plus one extra. You're welcome to bring a date. We can do, I can do a two v one. We can do a double date too. We can make it a real dinner, uh, if you, if you'd like. We can, we can do a little wager for that. I am, uh, I'm gonna let you pick red or black to start. You get to choose which color, and then you can either get first pick or second and third if you win. Do you have a preference on which pick you, you're going for? Because I might just, just do it with you right now. I might just let you have it. Oh. Interesting. I've never heard that offer. Uh, yeah, I would take. Uh, I feel like I'm giving up strategy. Is it binding? Can I can I say it? And I get that or no? You're gonna choose. I feel like you're you're picking me off here. But but um, I know what I'd do. Yeah. Um. Well, which one you want? I mean, I'd take first. I would just take first here well, today. Third? All yeah. right, I'll take second, and third. Wow, I feel like I got hustled. Actually, yeah, with the chips, that's actually probably a bad play. Man, I should have thought about a little more, but no problem. Oh, it's not I, a bad play. I got, I got my reasons. All right, I got Pavel. I'm going to go with the man who can he can get it done. I'll You're go with taking Pavel. the chips. Can't blame you for taking the chips. Yeah. Um, Who are the Brazilians? I want to steal the Brazilians from you. You can't get both Brazilians. That's not part that's of the deal. Man. You can't take I want to steal the Brazilians. I need you can't you take, take both of them, man. I need I need I've been doing my daily Duolingo every day. I got let me see the streak. I think it's two hundred and I got like a two hundred and fifteen day Duolingo streak going. So I'm really I'm aligned. But go ahead, do what you gotta do here. I can tell you Pablo Silva is the real deal. The other Brazilian I'm not familiar with, but I'm sure he's talented as well. All right. Let me go Pablo and, and Nicolas. All right, that's a resp that's a responsible play. I'm gonna take Ivan Ivan Luca for just just pure class. So now I get the Brazilian. I get the other Brazilian. 
You really, yeah, I feel like I'm getting hustled, man. Just to so you see Nicholas results and what he's really done. I'm just going to take a look so I don't get it wrong in terms of the amount of super million titles. He's got two in season one, three in season two, none yet in season three, already four final tables though. So that is, you know, this guy can play. He's got five titles and we are going to be. You got the chips on your side and maybe the talent, but I got, I got Brazil. All right, and then I'm going to go with, uh, man. I'm so upset with you. I'm going to go with Super Solid. He's been playing Super Solid. I've seen him a lot, and we're going to go we're gonna go with the go with my man from the U.K. there. Okay, I'll take the chips again. That's, what's that, Carl Green? Okay, and I will get Matthew. Wait, so, no, you don't get five, right? Don't we, no, there's we, still we, another one. There's still another player there. I get Matthew. Oh, okay, okay, and then. Well, well someone's gonna have players. five. I think you get, you would get, you get, you get five. Then you can have the last guy too. Uh, that. And then, and then the five, the fit. If if uh, Maslik wins, we'll just call it a push or something. Okay. Fine. How about the chat, you can do something for the chat if Maslik wins. The chat's in though. They're sweating my guys for a hundred and you for fifty. That's a GG ticket. So like, yeah, we'll just throw him. He's part of the audience, both sides. But they get, wow. they get that. We got ourselves a sweat. We got, we got a dinner wager. The audience is in on the action, fifty or hundred. I got a tweet going up here. It's going to be a fifty dollar cash giveaway. I'll give you that in a second. And then we also, I believe, I have hands up, which will be pinned for a jackpot. If you guess the winning hand. Of the tournament today, the exact suits, you hit the jackpot, it's progressive. So good luck in that. You guys can hit that link in the YouTube. There it is. Hands up on command from GG Poker right there. So good luck to everyone today. And let's let's start picking up the action here, Matt. You are the professional. You got the accolades, the titles, the tournaments. King, queen off opening here. Ace 10 suited, tough spot. What do you like here? Yeah, that is a, that's definitely a tough spot, especially with the ICM considerations. Um I don't know. Yeah, folding seems seems pretty reasonable against an under the gun plus one. I mean, it's probably three better three better folds a lot better. You don't want to call and let the big blind in in that spot. I don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm good with the fold. I mean, I don't know. It depends on your dynamic, right? Like, how much is the guy opening? How much are you gonna get away with? How much will he respect your three bets? I mean, it's definitely a great hand to put a put a three bet in with Ace Ten suited. It's even a good hand to call. That's one of those spots where you can do it all. You know, you really can. You can make a, a good reason for doing any play there. Um, I'm, I'm fine with the fold. Yeah, I think. Yeah, making a note on that hand. That's pretty close. I, I do think you're right, though. I don't think that's like a spot. It's just ICM wise, you don't really want to be tangling. Also, this super short stack, two hundred fifty thousand. He's sitting healthy, one point three. Not really looking to get too crazy. And this is something very interesting dynamic. Ivan, who is, I feel very exploitative. He is, of course, a good candidate here to three bet bluff, but against also the chip leader, right? He knows Pavel. They play a lot together. He also knows he's got such a big stack. He's going to open so wide, and we see that with the king six off. So really nice timing and, and situation there for Ivan to attack that player with the, with, the, with the pretty clear three bet bluff hand, though. The ace three suited. Not everyone's going to take that, though, Matt. You know, And his stack is, is, is healthy, and he is dictating – that he's going to play some poker today as we do see that super short stack there from Russia is in the blind next hand. Very, very short, but you know, a lot of play still not too many other short stacks. Ooh, ace queen suited, you know, could elect to flat. What? Tell me the pros cons here to flat versus three bet. It's like one of those super strong hands, but also again, the, chip leader opening so going to be a little wider than most you like the Sorry, three bet there matt or are you going to mix that you're going to always three bet ace queen suited there or do you think it's it's one of those it's close ace queen suited is a good i mean you want a three bet ace queen off probably more than ace queen suited you can let people yeah. in with the ace, ace queen suited you get to make the nuts with the flush a lot uh it's definitely a good three bet candidate Stack dependent, situation dependent.
Yeah, and here we go. Tense, early position. Pablo going to open and Pavel going to kick it on up. And there's a uh, – man, this is this is quite a – Matchup of hands, even the big blind who shorts got some chips, but there's the cold four bet coming in. And you know, Pablo 10 is going to shrink up a lot. And if you're Pavel, this looks super strong. And ace queen just kind of, yeah, one of those hands that you can't imagine. There's this, uh, it's under it's under the gun and under the gun plus one. I mean, this is incredibly strong from the Brazilian De Paulo here. Yeah, I mean, you're not really feeling very good about your hand right now after you open another gun and get three bet. Yeah, I would have been curious what Pablo would have done. Probably called with tens, played a hand, even though out of position and, you know, the, two of the bigger stacks. But, man, Pavel's really getting dealt in. He's getting a lot of playable hands. You know, king, queen off, king, jack off. King, six off was a stretch, of course. But he has gotten ace, queen. He's gotten. He's been getting pretty decent hands. And, you know, here, a hand like sixes, you put a lot of pressure on a player that is against under the gun raise and, you know, short stacks, not really much to think of there, but you can see the power of opening. And, and when you do have the chip lead, how, how, uh, how dominant you can be as Pablo wants to decide here to defend or not does call. Yeah, these are players that definitely have played a lot. Pablo Silva, you take a look, we go over and scroll at his results. Pablo Silva, and he is a very seasoned player on GG's. Played 20, he's cashed 22 times in season two. Season three, already 12 caches. And or I'm not sure if that's right. It says 12. Okay. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got a lot, five final tables. Kind of crazy. How, how seasoned this player is as we do see this matchup. Pavel, though, with the seat advantage here against Pablo. He's got a nice seat on his direct left covering. You got any live poker plans, Matt? The Bahamas, WPT, doing both, anything? You're going you're gonna to play the Hard Rock stuff in November? What's your, what's your live schedule look like? Yeah, it's going to be hard to say no to the Hard Rock. It's uh, it's a pretty easy commute for me, and it's a, definitely a great tournament. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for uh, December. Uh, probably not both, even though I know some people are going to do that. Um, but uh, they both seem like some pretty great series. It's a shame they're uh, they're competing with each other. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can kind of miss the end of the Bahamas and hit the hit the end of the... Uh, the win, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going Bahamas. You know, I'm, I'm GG. I love GG, and I love that you can win a bracelet in Bahamas. Also, very short trip for both of us. So, you know, that's uh, I'm, maybe that, maybe that's a benefit, right? There'll be a mix. A lot of people are going to be at the win at the WPT, so uh, maybe a little little better chance for a bracelet. A few less entries, mix of uh, thing. I'm I'm looking for you. You've got two, right? Two bracelets. I, I'm I'm looking for that first one. That be I don't know. Does it count? It does, right? Bahamas, it counts. I got one bracelet, just one. Um, I mean, they're counting online bracelets these days. No, no, Bahamas for... definitely counts. I mean, that's in paradise. Like, that's got that's gonna be counting. I'm just curious how big the the field size will be, but I think it will. Be. I think it's gonna be a great turnout. It should be a great event. So it'll be it'll be fun. I mean, Ivan Luko, Luca, who is a very, very cagey player with the suited king here gapped. I mean, versus the chip leader, he knows he's opening so wide. He definitely is a player that could get a little out of line here. Is he aggressive? He is, but he just understands dynamics so much. So he does end up peeling, not, not three betting, which I guess, you know, like, I'm telling you, his wheels are spinning. He's got all, all options on the table there. He does flat, doesn't get a really nice flop here as the, the ace comes out as he is just going to be not interested in this. But I mean, at the same time, he does have king high back door. So he does, okay, he does peel one off. I guess that's reasonable. You know, Pavel's going to have some stone air, right? Yeah, he could just be C-betting with nothing and you just call one really small bet to see what they do. I'd love yeah. to see a check here from, from Pavel. That would be a... A great play for him. Obviously, we know that seeing the cards. Um, you know, I'm not saying that's strategically the best move. Yeah, he does pick up the pot as we, again, still nine-handed. Our friend there, very short, 170,000. Everyone else still pretty healthy. 
be playing to a winter day. Happy Halloween to everybody out there. Big day. Nice to have a show on Halloween. See who's gonna gonna get the win today. I think the previous winners, as mentioned, Nicholas with five titles. In season one, he had two. No one else here had a win in season two. In season, I'm sorry, in season one. In season two, he had three wins. Also, Ivan with the win and Pablo with two wins. And Matthew won as well in season two. And then season three, no one has won yet. So there are a chance for some new winners and some repeat winners today. Excuse me there. All right. Pablo, chip leader in the second best hand in the game. And Pablo may take offense to this, but hey, at the same time, like you kind of don't want to be stepping on the chip leader's toes here. And you do have just sixes. So Ivan also, he is very interested in his holding the ace jack suited, but becoming a theme here. These guys are these guys are going at it. How many uh, entrants did this tournament get to start? Yeah, I think I believe 132. So nine out of 132 left. And then the prize pool, as you see, lower left, 286 to the winner. So I'd imagine these guys got a lot of history. They've all played with each other quite a bunch, huh? For sure. There's for sure some similar, some familiar faces. And Ivan, man, is he just thinking about the four bet slam or four four bet not all in? I mean, this is this is uh, a lot of time bank used in this spot with the raise, re raise, but. You know, again, you can't blame him. He knows Pablo's capable, opening pretty wide, and Pavel has the chips to splash. So, I mean, you can't you can't hate him, can't be mad at him for thinking hard here and maybe even doing something. Yeah, I mean, he could increase the stack over thirty percent here if he picks up the pot. Like he could even just shove here, thinking Pavel's moving in real light. But the problem is that um, you got one and a half million chips, and there's three guys under a million. Um, so. It's one of those spots where you're like, man, my hand is so good, but calling doesn't feel right, and uh, I'm really committing a lot of chips here um, to put in a four bet. So now, just like that, he's got a million chips, and he's even uh, with Matthew. But yeah. but then again, like if it works out, he's a genius, you know. So who's to say it's really a uh, yeah, I mean, again, it, you saw he took a while, little tempi, tempo timing, trying to, you know, whatever. He's doing his thing, but then he snapped folds, right? He knew he knew that was a that was just going to be a four bet, and then if got resistance would be out of there. So he does get out of the way. And, I mean, he is uh, – Pavel opening a wide variety of hands here. We are going to see some fireworks in general. You can tell these players are playing. So this time Ivan sits out the king jack off, and look at that. That's when it's working for you. Wake up kings, you get, you get cold four, and then you – get the eight six off open through was it eight six off or sixes it was eight six i believe it looked like sixes no it was eight six. Oh, was it i'm trying to, maybe i'm i am not sure now i thought it was maybe the audience can help us i thought yeah it's eight six eight of clubs ah. six of spades like that's that is that is a disrespectful open And Nicholas showing you a little bit of what he's capable of with the six deuce off, putting pressure on a stack again where there's a short stack of 157,000. If you're super solid, you know, he's not afraid though. He says, Look it, I got a suited ace. I know you're going to be opening pretty wide. Shows the deuce. Two seconds here. It looks like uh, one of my Brazilians just picked up a couple of aces, and we have Ivan on his right with tens. I would certainly expect to see a lot of money getting put in the pot here. He's going to – okay, so he's just going to call. And now uh, when DePaul squeezes, I think tens is – oof, that's that's a that's going to be an annoying hand to fold there. You know, you, you can't blame Ivan if he ends up going with it. I can't imagine him not, you know, back shoving here with two tens.
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ivan is Ivan has been getting put into a ringer here. He's been getting in some tough spots and been splashed around. And, and you know, again, he looks super aggressive. That's part of it, understanding what you're perceived at the table. And he definitely is perceived as aggressive. And now he's got 10s and he's getting, getting picked on. So let's see if he can avoid disaster here. I mean, there's some – is there a version where he calls, sees a flop, and decides a – it's just uh, just gets out of the way. Just understands Great, the situation. Well done. Yeah, it's times like those when you're just like wishing like maybe uh, you didn't squeeze that ace jack earlier and you might have a little a little more ammunition to peel a flop with those tens or something at least. But um Yeah. But that's a that's a, a good fold. Maybe he just knows his his uh his player and, and he doesn't think he's gonna be light here. If he thinks he has ace king at worst, then and he doesn't have nines. If he thinks he's overcalling nines, then then you could you could find a good fold there with tens. Do I have Ivan or do you? I have Ivan. Yeah. Oh damn! I wish you went with it. <laughs> yeah, he he is uh, he's splashing around. He'll be okay. Pavel, though, man, Pavel's chipped up. I'm feeling good about that four million chip lead stack. Good, good position on Pablo. Got nines, ace eight, another nice starting situation. As we see a refresh, king, queen, seven flop. Pretty, pretty big advantage for the under the gun razor there. The rainbow board, he is going to just see bet take it down. And uh, it's funny. We've seen a lot of huge hands here. No good hands. No very premium hand is we'll likely see it go blind. I mean, this King seven, though, it's getting you're getting you're getting desperate here, Matt. You got to at some point take a stand. He is going to put it in and actually no brainer. That's an yeah. easy shot with King seven. Pablo is going to have an easy call with the ace deuce. He's probably just going to want to call here, right? Or is he going to ISO? He might isolate. Uh, no, I mean. It's tricky because you got the chip leader in the big blind, right? Like it's almost a good play here of your Pavel to now raise your hand, because if if uh, Maslik stays in, that's not even the worst thing for you. <laughs> you get to keep on leaning on everybody else, right? Yeah. Take the chips. <clears throat> yeah. Well, as played, the seven six jack with two clubs, eight ten off. Got the gut shot, two overs to the six seven. I mean, king seven in the lead. All of a sudden, was behind, and now. It is going to have to fade at 8, 10, or a 9, or King 7 will get that massive, whatever, quadruple up as a club is out as well. Ooh, that looks that like looks a four scary. sider. That is a four sider. That is a GG. Pavel going to knock out. He's rocking the Jungle Man uh, avatar picture as well, which is powerful. That's 4.4 million, and that is a big lead. I mean, look at who's in second. What's he got? Almost 3x. Close to 3x second. Pretty big lead at eight-handed at the moment. Who let you pick first? What's going on here? Um, that was a war that was given. I've never seen that play before, but I think it actually was a good play, and we'll see how it pans out. <laughs> I bet with my heart, Jeff, not my head. I get it. Well, you somehow got all the Brazilians. You got Nicholas. You got stuff happening. I like your side. I think this is pretty even and there it is. We might just see an instant classic. This is a big, big, big moment for the table for us as well because Nicholas and Super Solid, we each have a player here. Again, the audience, if one of my players win, you get a $100 GG ticket. If one of Matt's win, it's 50 So you are sweating. I got you with me. And we are sweating a flip right now because Nicholas would be in a very short stack. This is a big moment for the day, for the tournament, for everyone involved. No ace or king so far. Queen safe. Turn is safe. Six out, one to come, Matt. Wow. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. No. Oh, man. That is dangerous for everybody. And Nicholas is in a very powerful position all of a sudden with a little bit more than 2.5 million. And we are down to seven. This is Halloween, man. Trick or treating out there. I know you guys got busy days. There's a lot going on. So this might be a fast one. We're seeing Pavel and Nicholas vacuum chips. We are with a lot of experienced players, though, and very good structure. So we, we got our we got ourselves still some play today. Again, let us know where you're watching from. Thank you for joining us. So many familiar faces, some new ones as well. Matt Waxman, again, you can follow him on the socials. He'll tell you more about that. He is 
very accomplished player and he does where, where you're more active right now matt on twitter instagram which is your handle which where should people go follow you at if they want to keep up with you yeah i mean i don't post the most uh socially but yeah you can check out my my instagram is more personal stuff uh just stories but uh i'll say some poker takes on twitter <clears throat> matthew score wax man and uh you'll be able to see what i think about a lot of the the latest scandals in the poker community of uh if I'm prompted to say something. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot going on. Poker community, there's there's there's, there's always action. There's stuff happening as we see a tough flop here. Ace, queen, jacks against each other. And jacks, you know, tricky hand to play is going to come on out and fire Matt. He <laughs> just ripping here. I mean, ace queen. He just, it's like just a committal bet. I don't know. That was not what I was expecting. Which one of these is my player? Uh, I believe I have Matt and you have Carl. That's oh, uh, that's good flop for you. Pretty good spot. Yeah. I mean, I know that. Okay. So I got the Brazilians, the Swede, and Carl Green. Well, Oof. Matt Oof, is rough. in a nice spot. I know you like to root for Matt's normally, but this is a time where you would be rooting for someone named Carl as it is a river away. No. Woo! Oh, my God. It was, just felt like one of those one of those things was happening. It is not as the Jacks are going to take a hit. Carl in trouble. You know, tough flop, right? Just You don't want to – I don't know about the lead commit there, but either way, he did get a little unlucky. It was a, it was a flip, and he did decide to put the chips in there. And he was behind. <laughs> All right, we have got the do six, queen ten. Yeah, man, Nicholas, I uh, you that, uh, that's Lena. That's Lena. You battled with Lena in the past on on line he's been around forever he's got i think the number one all-time winningest online player if i'm Who? not mistaken which one uh nicholas ostat have i battled with him online yeah for sure back in the day i'm sure uh, what, give, what was his name online i'm i'm, I'm almost positive lena 900 let me see. Let me just do a quick search. Like, it's been a while. That was back when we used to grind all the tournaments. Oh, this guy looks familiar. Yeah, you've, you've played with them a lot. I'm sure. Lena 900. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Ivan Luka, King 10 suited under the gun. A little different, though, now as we are seven-handed. So... You know, he's starting to look off a 20 blind stack. A little bit awkward to play. Yeah, there's there's not really bigger names in poker, in online poker for sure. I'm actually curious. I don't think he's played a ton yet of Triton or some of the uh, live stuff. I do believe has some, some, some results live, but definitely sort of solidified himself in the Mount Rushmore of online poker. He's nine suited. Pretty nice flop. Both players interested. Gut shot over for Pavel. 10-7 off. Definitely some action cards there. Although the nine of clubs wouldn't be coming since he has that. But there is a five of clubs. That would be something. And there's also, you know, 10-7 still. He's got, got some decent board coverage. Could have other ideas here. As it stands, Ace Nine suited the best hand. Ten seven. This is actually you're thinking of the bluffs, yeah, probably gotta be one of the, the ones you gotta, gotta be going for more. You have ten high, I can't assume you're good. 
and ace nine clubs not so fun when you have the actual the missed club draw right but you do have ace high it's blind on blind you got a buff here this is interesting because you know pablo has ace high which can beat a lot of draws that missed but the problem is he has the nine of clubs and the ace of clubs so he has a lot of the hands that would be draws blocked making it a, a harder decision right like it would be an easier call for him if he had like ace nine of spades Yeah, that's 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 true. I mean, look, Pavel's just having himself his a little bit of a field day at the moment. He has got four point five million. He is in a great position. Matthew showing a little moxie up to one point eight. Very even now, other than Carl, who is short and Ivan. Everyone else pretty healthy here. As again, pay jumps are big. You can see lower left as always. ICM. How much do you? What are your considerations in ICM, Matt? I mean, is it like on a given final table? Or is there a certain based on your who's there, what the what seat you have, like what are you doing in terms of strategy in t regards to ICM when you approach final tables? Typically, how, how do you how do you respect that? Um. Well, I mean, typically, ICM the basic principle is that you know if you have more chips, you have a better chance of lasting longer in the tournament. So your goal is to move up further in the payouts, right? Which means that you should be more risk averse uh, unless you're the shortest stack, in which case, you know, then you get to be a little bit more aggressive to try to accumulate chips and get yourself in a better position. Uh, and if you're the biggest stack, you can you can kind of use that leverage to uh, to weigh on the middling stacks and and, and exploit them for, for some situations yep. where you can pick up some chips. So it all depends. Depends on your position, depends on your table, it depends on the tendencies of the other players. You know, like maybe if you're the shortest stack, but you got the guy who's like third in chips and fourth in chips just going crazy, then you know you could be more conservative because they might be more likely to bust, you know. But if they're all playing pretty snug and smart, then you got to be the aggressor, right? Looks like a river for two pair for Matthew. I'm interested to see. Uh... Oh, it looks like he's leading out. So this is a bluff. This is definitely a bluff here, which is, I love it. He's got the king of hearts. He's got a jack. Um, I don't think Matthew can fold here if he thinks he's capable, though, right? Like, he's probably got to look him up with two pair. He does have a heart, which is helpful a little bit, right? It helps a little in terms of the story he's telling. He's basically repping, repping a I flush, mean, but he's probably targeting aces up, right? Like, or yeah, he's got to be targeting the aces up. Maybe even I don't know, man. I don't know about this bluff. This is an interesting one. Uh... It's a, this is a cool hand for sure. Very cool hand. Also, you said targeting. It's just hard for his opponent to have a flush here, right? Ever. I mean, you have the you have the nut heart blocker, but then like, what other hand, hearts does he have in his hand? Like, he's not really opening any of the other combinations, probably of of hearts, right? The jack queen ace are out there. Like to have a flush. Yeah, this is a cool hand. Very very curious. Probably Matthew is scratching his head though. What bluffs does he have? I almost think that if I'm gonna rep the. The hearts, I might, I might size up a little bit. Like he did, he did what he do, like two thirds pot here. Maybe I, I might even bet over the pot here if I'm bluffing with with that hand. But then I guess you take out the possibility of having a ten. Maybe he wants to keep a ten still in. Nice call, very nice call. <laughs> Pavel shows he had the ten. Very nice call and a nice bet, though. I do like the, the execution. I think you're right. That's another lesson in poker sizing, and it does matter. Right? He started. He was close to folding there. Maybe he would fold for a pot size or over. 
bet you know there's some other sizing options in that spot as we get to see ivan with the jack 10 suited just not messing around just stuffs it in there does force folds as he will chip up and we are still seven handed we do have a 50 dollars cash giveaway on my pin twitter matt you're eligible if you want to get a retweet out there that is that is live we also do have the hands up pin you guys are eligible for the jackpot if you guess the winning i'm gonna i, I keep saying i do it most weeks i'm gonna do it right now what's your winning hand today matt give me the suits like the hand that wins the whole thing yeah like it's like queen jack off with the you have to put the suits though you got to put ace, yeah. ace of clubs seven spades all right i'm gonna um i would love to hear DePaul's thought process on that bet with the king of hearts like i i'd kind of want to understand it better to maybe i could learn something of, of what he was thinking because it's just such a i mean that's i don't know i, I think typically that's a spot where i might want to just uh just sigh and check and hope he checks back and then probably just fold when he bets you know i, I don't know yeah all right, you said ace. I'm going to say jack, ten of hearts. I don't know. It just seems right. You got your guess in. I put it in. I actually clicked the link there for hands up. If you want to be eligible for that jackpot, you got to put it in. You can't just say it or type it here. But you could let us know as well. Make sure you submit it so you're eligible to win in that chat. And we're going we're gonna to see what is going to contend with Pavel today. I mean, he really has chipped up nicely and, and played and had good timing as well. So Carl just folded an ace uh, on the button with... 14 bigs. Pretty interesting. Because um, he is the shorty, right? It, it, might, it, it might be right. It might be right to do so. Um, you know it's not exploitable for him to shove there, though, with any ace and just pick it up, pick up the blinds. Oh, mystery hand. We're lucky to have Waxman for this because Ace Jack from the chip leader offsuit in the big blind. Let's see. We don't get to see the other hole cards, and we are going to get to see a battle here. Again, blind on blind. Such a big spot in poker as we see the raise. Lead. All right. I will be raising this to 140. 140. That's oh, aligned that. with you on that. Same thing. Same um, thing. So far, so good. You got a perfect hand going, Matt. Okay. I mean... So this is tricky. You can check this one back because you have plenty of showdown value and you can even call a lot of turns uh, as thinking of the best hand. Uh, but you are the chip leader and it just puts so much pressure on him when he checks to you that like he's probably not going to check raise you frequently. So yeah. So I was going to say I like a C-bet, maybe even smaller than this. This is about half the pot. You can maybe even bet like a third or a quarter of the pot here. But then again, like half might be a better sizing because it might make him less prone to uh, check raise you, which you really hate to see with your hand. Um, but now he called one and he got a pretty safe turn, right? So like you're you're not feeling great anymore. You want to just check this back. And now if Pablo leads here, we kind of have to to fold our hand. Um. And if he checks back, I don't. If he checks, if he checks here, I don't know if our bluff is getting that much credit because the board hasn't really changed all that much. So, I'm, I might. I'm, I'm probably just giving this hand up if I'm Pavel. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna fold now. Yeah, I mean, the, you do block like Jack Ten, Jack Queen, Jack King in those hands, but that is actually what he had, the Jack King. So nice Look executed that. bluff. Look at that reverse float by my brazilian i'm saying my brazilian because i i went up big in the draft to get this guy and uh that's why we did it jeff because of the plays like that i i've never seen him play before but i just i felt it you know i just knew it i just knew it he is certainly capable and so is pavel with the chip lead and the dynamic here he is just going to rip it in this is again something that you start thinking when you're playing poker when you're in a tournament if you're able to get to a position of power in a tournament to find different spots like okay yeah why shove there versus just you know 140 or whatever you you just gotta put the player in so much of a tough position especially when there are short stack to the left i mean i guess ivan's not gonna make a crazy fold tight fold but just doesn't want to call off and being first in so valuable it really is first in first to shove first to put pressure does a lot of good and Pavel giving us a clinic in that regard as Ivan gets a real hand here on the button versus Matthew's open. I think he's going to go with it. I think he's going to 
Is he going to shove or is he going to three bet? I think not. I think Ace King Suda, you could not three bet all in, but just price all in. I guess what's he got? 20, less than 20, right? Yeah. I think it's yeah. all in. I will say that if Pavel size is a lot smaller on the flop, uh, you get the opportunity to double barrel on the turn a lot more, which is pretty cool with that ace jack of his. I don't know if you want to double barrel with that kind of hand, but maybe you're, it's even less likely the guy's going to try to bluff you on the river because the pot will be smaller. It's interesting that Ivan's used some time banks with, with spots when he's raising. He does seem to take his considerations. He does take his time, and he does go for a pretty small three-bed here and very inviting. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to induce, which is the right play in this situation because uh, Matthew doesn't have the pair, and he's gotten dominated with his hand. And I'd imagine that Man, so he's going to have more than the pot if he gets called here. But I still don't think he's ever folding. Like, it's going to be hard for him to fold a lot of flops, right? And this is one of those hands, though, exact hands where you really do. Oh, he does get the induction, oh, the induce. That's exactly what Ivan wants. You he, he almost don't want the guy to just call there. Wait a minute. So now, yeah, I was going to say, now is, is Matt, he's folded. He... <laughs> He four bit folded. Nice chip up, Myvin. Just shows you again the difference, the nuances of the game, different spots, different plays, different situations. And Pavel gets the absolute cookies. Carl, no thought on the King Ten Suda. Definitely a hand with his stack size that he could consider shoving how wide Pavel is. I would have got the bad news there, but as it turns out, Pavel gets not such an interesting flop, and he is now in second but he does have the key card there matt he's got the spade there is straights available yep four cards he's straight, got a which... great hand for calling here you get to keep uh all of nicholas's bluffs in and you can make the nuts with your ace of spades and then like now he might even have like a, a good bluff catcher if nicholas does bet something closer to like the size of the pot he could he could probably call with his hand i'd be impressed to see him fold here for half pot Obviously, Nicholas has a huge range advantage um, on this kind of board, but aces is just too good of a hand to to fold. And, you know, Nicholas could even be value betting a hand like king eight or something. It's possible. Yeah, I mean, in terms of range advantage, though, we have seen Pavel open eight six off with less chips and, and spots. So I think the range advantage in that particular case, I, I would say, is almost a wash. But... But yes, normally you're right. I do think uh, that's a that's a good that's true. But they're playing some they're playing wide. I'm sure these guys have played with each other a lot, right? They probably know each other pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at their resumes, you can definitely tell they've played this a few times. And Nicholas, I believe the most or the second mark, may, maybe Arthur Mortizian might have six, but I believe five. I know he's like either first or second all time in the titles for GG Million. So he is. Looking to stamp his six today, which is just crazy. Got a couple of sixes on the button. Probably go open and a defend from Pavel. These are both your guys, right? Yes. Sixes, Jack. Wow. Hey, we'll get some money in here for sure. It's a pretty yeah, good that's... flop if you're defending here with Jack Nine. You're happy to see this board. You got top pair. It's unlikely that Matthew's raising with like eight ten or five eight. You know, you may be worried about six, seven. You're worried about sevens and sixes. You think there's a good chance Matthew will check back with a seven. So you're, you like this turn card. Yeah. 
Yeah, I certainly don't blame him for betting here, but you're gonna you're gonna see a raise. Our Canadians definitely gonna want to go for that double up here. And you want to get money in because if your guy's got top, a pair of nines, there's a real good chance that won't be top pair by the river or there will be a straight out. So you want to put a big bet in here if you're Matthew. You want to make it like 500, 450, 400, something, something probably over three times the size of this, of this bet. Yeah, 420. It's a very good raise by him. And then now you got a decision, right? Like this guy's slamming a bet in here against you you're the chip leader you can bust this guy great fold great fold and that's why he's here that's why he's at the final table because because he's just gonna bet and give up top pair like that against the button raise yeah understand situation where he's at what's going on what what players are willing to do take what type of risk they'll take versus him and he didn't like the situation now matthew with some more chips and lena gonna get three bet jack queen suited definitely a very playable hand and decides instead of folding or flatting that best course of action and, and lena this is what is fun to me to watch players like this in these spots because we're all here we open a hand it's like do what you know this is multiple multiple options here all of them this is a, this is a, a gross spot if you open ace nine suited and this guy that just won the pot is three betting you over 3x, uh, he's one of two guys that can bust you. You just got to you gotta give it up, and, and that's another well-timed uh, three-bet from Matthew. <laughs> it's looking good. The Canadian's looking good. He's making some good plays. I wish I drafted this guy. Where, where What was he in ships to start this thing? Oh, he was low. You took him over Carl, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. Carl, I have not heard of, and Matthew, I know, has got some game. And here we're going to get to see a massive moment for the table. Again, a classic. We're getting a lot of classics, Matt. Ace, king to queens, and Pavel in the lead to the turn is clean. Are we just going to see? Is it time. Just... No, I think it's not. It's just clean oh. today. This is Halloween. Oh, People have trick-or-treating to do. People got parties to go to, like stuff's going on, man. This is moving. Five point three million down to six quickly. We are what for three to forty-five minutes in. We have lost three players, and we see Pavel with the absolute pile. This has been a rough run out for my team. I'm not gonna lie. It's three on three, but you got all the chips. Yeah, I mean, it does feel good right now. I'm, I'm thinking of places that we can go, but it's it's early. I've done a lot of these bets. I actually, so I guess I, I'm making a Google sheet with keeping track of the wagers because, like, at some point, I just they, they blend together. I've won some, lost some. I've had some heartache. I've had some great get theirs, but it's it's fun. You, it's fun you, you, know, you know, you owe me too, right? I actually do know that. So this is yeah, this is. <laughs> you know you didn't. Yes, I did. I do remember. <laughs> I promise you, I know. I do. Uh, I don't know a lot. If I, if you've been a guest on the show and you tell me I owe you a dinner, I'm I'm likely gonna have to just concede. But you, I I do know that. I know that you got some dinner credits. I got a good one. I I, I got you with a with a, a bet on the podcast a couple years ago. I got you dirty. We gotta cash them in, man. You gotta start cashing these in. Yeah, it's okay. They're all it's all fun. All right. Folds the six eight suited. Good fold, good fold, easy fold. I'm interested to see what Matthew's gonna do from the small blind here with this hand, being second in chips. Okay. I like it. He just calls. You could definitely sneak in here if you're the Brazilian Pablo Silva. Uh you got a suited king. Obviously, he doesn't know that he wants the three, but... I will say this. I have noticed in the last months that the big blind multi-way, not closing the, or closing the action in a spot like that, even with a very nice suited hand. I mean, more at these final tables. It's different stages of the tournament. I'm sure it's different, right? But it just I've seen such tight, disciplined folds where I'm like, wow, like really? even... 
it just seems like trivial. Like, yeah, it's one blind and you're closing the action. You could flop a flush, but, or whatever, two pair sets, a lot of things you could do. And he just, people are just really getting out of the, getting out of the way with pretty decent holdings there. Uh, so well, that's, that's, that's curious. That's kind of cool to know. I would, I would probably adjust by, uh, calling more from the small blind with hands that you traditionally like with three bet. Uh, you, Cause if you're not worried about the over or uh, the big blind over calling, then you get to kind of just reduce the variance and uh, keep the pot smaller, which is exactly what, what Matthew did in that yeah. situation. All right, let's go Nicholas. And Carl is is in the uh, eight big blind territory, about to take the big blind. Yeah, I mean this is this is this is honestly going super fast, and this is uh, based on the chip distribution. You know, it's it's sort of a three horse race. Pablo, of course, and Ivan still have chips, but I mean, Pavel is really in a nice spot here. Don't count Pablo out. That's wow, my guy. this this was. This one, I mean, I think it's a that's a bit of an exploit to Carl. Like, just not that he's worried. He, I think because we've seen Carl fold the ace, right, on the button with 14 blinds. Like, he's playing super snug. I think that Pavel maybe thinks that he's even well, going to just lay down a little Ivan, wider. Or Ivan? Ivan? How would you pronounce that if he's from Argentina? I say Ivan. All right, well... This is a juicy spot for him. I mean, yeah, there's only 200K you can pick up, but I, I think I like a three bet here. Uh, three bet fold, unfortunately. But uh, this is a hard hand to pass up, even if you are second in uh, or the second shortest stack. What does he go? 240? Something small? He's been three betting small yeah. in these spots. Yeah, I mean, I'm a live pro, so I'm making it like 275. But like, yeah, I, I think these online guys are making it like two, 230. And they're There's probably been some right. super he clicky can't. spots. Like he's really this this player in particular. He does some very creative, uh, inducing small sizes. Like I've seen him do some very cute stuff. And in, in well, he spots. three bet folded the ace jack earlier, and and Pavel had kings at hand too, right? Well, he he called four, right? I guess. Well, it was a four. It was an open and a three open three bet four bet. Yeah. Or, the uh, four yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just right, shoved well, it in. I mean, takes you the other imagine. option, and I mean, we are very close to a full runover. We know it's poker; it's never easy, and this does get rewarded Oof. sometimes more often than we think. And there is, at the moment, a very good-looking situation for Ivan. Oh wow. my! Two. Just in case, just Carl in case, was, uh... this is flop, and that is uh, that would have been a absolute full, full steam runover. Now, Ivan, a little more, a little more, a little more chips here. Now, what's he got? 20 40 blinds all of a sudden carl was licking his chops there thinking he was about to get a ladder and then uh ivan got there on him six to five that's a that's a six figure club pretty big jump to 23 g's two two plus buy-ins and look at nicholas just knows ace 10 off on your head pavel i got ace 10 off i'm pushing up you just took a little bit of a Took a little bit of a hit. Uh, you got a little unlucky, and now I'm going for it. But we're going mystery hand, Matt. The mystery hand, yeah. Matt's got a nice ring to it. King, queen, hearts, oh, fun one to play. I got 20 bigs now. I'm live, and I don't know what to do. I got so many chips. All right, easy min. Let's see what, what Pablo does. He has 40 bigs, right? Is that 40 bigs? Is my math that bad? He has 2 mil, isn't it? 1.9. Oh, or... my. He does have 40 bigs. He's got a lot of Four chips. Big blinds. That is nice. I'm going to check this back. I could easily have the best hand right now. That's a very dry board for me. I do not want to get check raised. I could backdoor some hearts. I could hit a pair. I'm still feeling pretty good about my hand, but I, I might put a delayed seabed in here if he checks again. Probably like something like, like 225. Or actually, I could bet even smaller than that. I, I, I could bet like 130 because I don't think that's going to make a difference if he has a pair he's calling either way. Ace high, he's probably calling either way. So I, I'll put in like 130 here with this hand. You could check it back too, though. That's a, also a very reasonable play because there's a very good chance you still have the best hand. Yep. And now I'm feeling pretty good on this river. Like, you know, I... I 
if he checks, there's a good chance he has the ace high, and I don't, I don't think I'm going to try to bluff anymore because I, I don't have a very credible story here to be able to value bet this river unless I have, like, ace five. But, um, but yeah, so this is, this is, I, I think I could call here. I think I could call, I mean, I don't know. I, I could see a reason to call here if he's betting. Because he's probably going to check the ace highs. Is he going to value bet a deuce? No. I think his, his range is pretty polarized here, and, and there's a good chance he's betting like a queen high, jack high type of hand. Ten high. Yeah, also, like five, six or something would probably take it, would lead the turn, no? Or something like that might lead. Uh, yeah, unless the stacks are deep enough to the point where he thinks five, six plays better as a check raise, and then uh, he just wants to put in a, a two thirds bet bluff on the river. Oh. Does, Ooh, we got well, him. He had the four. Already had the four, so it's not quite as dramatic. But yeah, the deuce on the river. Nice, nice, nice bet. Yep. And you're great value you're... bet. Very, very well done. He knew his four is good at that point. Um he picked the right size, two thirds to get paid off. I, I don't blame Ivan for calling there. Um well done, Pablo. You know. He could have won that hand with either card. Well, I can tell you what, this is, uh, yeah, Matthew does just call, not three bets, so that's got that working for him. He does have a bit of a, you know, not a great flop, may get bailed out here. This could have definitely gotten to be a bigger pot with this this dynamic, you know, six-handed, short stack, cut up open. He can call again here. He can definitely yeah. call again, yeah. Um, he's not going to love a double barrel from Nicholas. And he didn't get a heart or any straight possibilities or a pair, so... Now he could fold like to something. I think you're gonna see about. Yeah, I was gonna say three fifty. Yeah, you're definitely gonna see a lot of continuation bets there with your ace queen uh, on the king high board, and the opener is not necessarily got it. So you can definitely speculate and call one more when you're Matthew. All right, we got the ace five suited, Jeff, in the big blind. We know how the solvers feel about ace five suited. Yeah, they they like it, and I mean, oh, Pop baby. Elbow, we now don't... you got the, this. Is it? You get to rip this. This is this is the bluffing hand right now. Like I want to see Ivan shove this all in. Obviously, it's easier for us because we see that Pablo's got ten nine. But hey, this guy's aggro. He's the chip leader. He's been battling with the guy who's second in chips, and you have the best bluff hand. And it turns out in this situation, you have the best hand with ace high. 570, Ooh. though. That is that is a crazy – that's one of the bigger three bets we've ever seen. I've seen on here out of the out of position there. He made it like he, – he absolutely went to town on that. Really just – I guess I guess he'll be balanced, though, you know. It's like the second stack. He's saying, hey, I got a real hand. Come get it. Big size, wonder, 570. I wonder if, if Pavel has value hands that he's going to three bet in that situation that he's folding to the 1.6 million show. I think he, he does, but I'm not positive. Like if he has ace jack suited, you know, is he, yeah, he might, he might have, he might be priced in to call that one. I don't, I don't know. I would have loved to see a shove from the ace five suited, but then again, like, yeah, he did make it quite a lot of chips. It's definitely not going anywhere after that C bet. He's going to call one with the tens. And I mean, this board is pretty friendly for your tens here. You, you know, you got to believe that he's going to call another. Yeah, pretty, 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 pretty clean. Annoying when it's one over. You just don't want to believe it can really be what's happening. But yeah, King Queen does pair that top, top pair with a queen kicker. So healthy. Healthy spot for Matthew. Let's see what he does. He is going for, for value here. He does have a spade. You know, there are some continuation bets to pick up spade draw equity. Uh, Ivan has one as well, though. And, uh... Yeah, I, I imagine he's calling another. And then I'm, I'm wondering what Matthew sizing is for River, right? Is he going to go for the shove? I mean, Ivan's got less than a pot. You're pretty confident your hand is good here. Your bluff should probably be shoves. Maybe your value should probably be shoves. Right? 
yeah. think uh, I think it's a rip, to be honest with you. You go for it all. And then I think Ivan's just going to sigh and, and find a fold with his 10s, right? There is a right. dynamic of Carl, right, for that pay jump where you you're like kind of if you're Ivan you're like hey like man this guy's incentivized to put pressure here it was you know he's gonna barrel ace jack suited jack queen suited of spades these type of hands too so i exactly. think that exactly. he yeah. is gonna have a tough decision i think there will be i don't think this will be a snap fold all in but then again ivan plays laser fast on decision making he may already have his mind made up i'm sure he's thinking well he's thinking so let's see what matt does if he does go for the jam which makes a ton of sense Wow. Oh, he really wants to get called. It's interesting because of like the mind games and the leveling here. Like, do I shove? Do I bet half? If I'm bluffing, do I shove? If I'm value betting, do I bet half? Does he think I'm going to shove with a bluff? You know, yeah. and you want to figure out how to get paid. But this is this was the right answer because I think Ivan would have folded to a shove, and I think that he can definitely call this. He's getting three to one here with his tens, you know. He might be thinking, "Oh, well, he th he wants me to think he's value betting and he's betting smaller." So you know, it's I like this bet a lot from Matthew. You know, when you got your value hands, you definitely want to try to get paid. I think I would have shoved if I were him, but but seeing the cards, yeah, I definitely bet five fifty. What do you think, Jeff? Is he calling? Is Ivan finding the call button? I think he's going to fold. I think uh, I just feel like he gets these right so often. But also, I think like having the 10 of spades, I think, matters a lot in my mind. Well, not a lot, but it matters because I think it really does take down your the, the turn barrel bluffs that he opens. Like, like I said, 10 jack of spades or queen, you know, th these type of hands. I think he's just when it's really close i think that it starts getting to those considerations and yeah a tough fold for sure you could see why calling is very reasonable let's go carl nice carl's in here carl He's is definitely in. getting called pavel sees that he can leverage that little stack some but you know at the end of the day the math is so so strong it is the pay jump you do have a suited queen it's for no more chips basically what at what point is it would it you could could you say it's like it, it would almost look like colluding if you folded but you you there have been times where look at that oh, oh, i love it i love we, it i do too you rarely see it you rarely see that, that but face. is that, look at that where, face. Where, where, i mean that strategy at the highest level but at the same time it could almost look like if it was two friends right Wait, like if that was three, pavel and his if it was me and you playing and people know we know each other and i fold you there you wouldn't you call so I, that's actually a real question matt how do you draw the line on like collusion and and gamesmanship and strategy because like it it does seem a little murky and i'm not i am saying that was for sure strategy i'm just throwing it out there right you can start get into weird weird territory well i'm interested mainly because we saw a point earlier in the stream when i said pavel could could fold here for that reason and then he called yep, yep. um but this time he didn't do so this time he he folded getting uh nearly four to one on a call with a suited queen um yeah, that was really interesting. And like maybe Carl knew that too. You know? He's like, Oh well I'm on I'm on your team. You know, keep me in and you could leverage the rest of these stacks. That would have I mean he did have a suited ace. It would be more exciting if he had like deuce three suited or deuce or deuce, you know, five eight off and he just ripped it in there. But yeah, I mean still I I just think the point you know, you, you get to a point, though, where, Matt, like, you get my point, right? Like, if it's two, like, let's say it's Jason Kuhn and Ike Haxton, right? That are, like, two of the best players in the game. They're crushing the highest stakes, and you're at a, a 100K Triton Invitational, and that happens. Like, people would shout collusion, no? Yeah, I, I doubt you'd see that from either of those guys. But um, Yeah, but Pavel's at that level. I like it. I, I like it. It's, a, it's an interesting play. And... Uh, you got to think, like, okay, what can he gain here? He can gain an extra 400, but he might be able to make 400 off, like, one hand uh, just because Carl's still in. 
you know, and he's definitely going to get a lot less resistance on his opens and his three bets. Yeah, appreciate everyone right. here watching. Let us know where you're checking in from in the world. But that was a wild, wild situation. And Pavel, whoa, look at these hands. Everyone was suited, aces, yeah. broadways, nines. Okay, and now Pavel has the bluff hand. He's He's got to pull the trigger, right? He's got to be the one to do it. And nines is going to fold. That's the sick part. Nines is probably going to fold here. Uh, because he's facing... Four bets after he opened under the gun. Well, I'm, I'm already assuming Pablo put a four bet in, uh, but that's just me. Uh, maybe I'm just dreaming here. You you've been you've been you've been going at the ace fight. You've been coming at it. You're saying they love it, man. The solvers love this hand. It's the bluff hand, right? And this is our guy. This is our bluffer, right? This is our guy that's doing it. He's putting in the light bets. So how does he say no to this one? Wow. wow. I mean, it is under the gun, and then the second stack, three betting with people behind. But, yeah, yeah, I did think that there could be some shenanigans up. And Ivan. Yeah, it would have been super aggressive to go there, and, and I think he made the right play, but I just was just wishing that he that he went for it, you know? Chose violence. And seeing yeah. the cards. If you got nines there and, and you see him. Wow. I didn't think nines would necessarily fold to uh that would also just... fall into his sort of plan, right? With the, the short stack, like a spot like that where you're like leave him around and then you go. But I, I he also knows Ivan and Nicholas are they're 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 real players. These guys are playing for wins. They're not gonna they're gonna, gonna not gonna pass up the edge in spots. They're, you know what I mean? And here though, it. wow. Wow. <laughs> like again, ICM might say fold, but Ivan says no. Ivan says, I know, Ace Jack, Ace Jack good start good. for him. No sweat good. turn, and we have got ourselves a new ball game. Ivan back to two million, and things are evening out, so. Whoa. Wow. Wow. For my personal wagering with you, I don't mind, because that just distributes a little more chips, but I think I'd prefer the runaway stack uh, in general, but. Nah, you like this. You, you got, you like your chips spread out for now, I think. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess Nicholas looks dangerous there with the the uh, three million. But I'll tell you, he's been playing a nice brand of poker, Mario Mosbuck, who just won here, and then he got, I believe, second or chopped in the the Triton. So he's been playing a nice brand. We've, we've seen a lot of success, a lot of people here. This is sort of the Super Bowl for online poker, and do see some carryover. It's always impressive when you see guys that are crushing online and live, as it's such a yeah, did so many nuances, so many differences in the game. But some of these players have done just that. They do both. I would say Nicholas is dominant online, though, and played less live. Ivan, using that chess clock, each player gets 15 minutes. Interesting to note, it does not refill. So if you do run out of time, we have seen that numerous times where players have zero time, and then they have to act within five seconds every street. Five oh. seconds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Matthew though. Matt Matt's been burning some clock. Or no, no. Okay, ten. I thought it said three. So he's got he's got clock. Everyone pretty healthy on clock here. I love this idea for online poker. It's so much better. You know, GG really crushes it with their uh, their UX. It's it's really really good for playing. It'd be cool if we had something like this for live poker, huh? Yeah, would be nice. Maybe 10 seconds would be my only uh, critique instead of five. Five is tough. Five be tough. Tough spot. Ace, king, sevens. Ace, king, though. It's got a lot of cards that are good. Ten, jack, queen, king, ace, of course. Doesn't know exactly where they are at and has got to be a little worried. But the sevens also, you know, you kind of do realize against you're doing well against ace, queen, ace, king, but still a very scary board. And if you're Ivan, you got to be asking yourself if, if if you get checked to in this situation, should you be turning your hand into a bluff now? You know, I guess he doesn't have to think about that because he's getting bet into by the Canadian. That's not pretty pretty, pretty strong bet there to just go for it and take that down in that spot. I mean, that is a I'm impressed with Matthew today. I'm a very accomplished player, but I think he's bringing his A game and putting people to the test, chipping up nicely. Three point five currently actual chip leader is Matthew. 
I mean, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's got the Canadian flag and he's repping. Yeah, I like his chances. He's been making some really good decisions today. I've been impressed. But we got Pablo over here just kind of picking his spots, laying low, maybe waiting to strike. Pablo's going to call his ace-10 offsuit. Now the stacks are evening out. He's taking the less aggressive approach. Nicholas will bet a third of the pot here with his ace king high. Almost got the ace of clubs, which is a very, very powerful card right now. I think we're seeing check check here. And then I'm going to wonder if Pavel would bet the river. Oh, no, he's leading. Wow. What am I doing predicting these guys? Look at this lead, Jeff. This is this is great. Your hands are tied here if you're Nicholas. And uh, I think Pavel correctly assumes that he can get better aces to fold, and he does have the range advantage defending that big blind. Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy game. We got some talented players tangoing. That's what you want to see. We got some Canadians in the chat. Let's see some Canadian. We see a lot of, a lot of international crowd here, and we are, we are going to be playing again to a winner. As always, it's going to be some valuable GG million points at stake. Season 2023, 20, episode 29. Matt Waxman joining myself, Jeff Gross here. We're a pleasure to have you at this final table and, and sweat with us. And again, Booth Magic, Matt, I'm sure if you're going to play live, we'll be singing your praises and telling the next guest what you just did yeah. i think uh Both our players just flopped top pair and it went check check that is that is respect to the situation that is respect to pot control and we are we're seeing some great plays and some cautious plays also some aggressive plays we're seeing the full spectrum and carl that hand was uh i, I gotta put that in i don't think i've actually seen that play executed in a long time where the the, the like keep in all in is and it's it's interesting you know carl triples up doubles up something happens carl ends up going from basically out the door very likely a high percentage of the time in in sixth now you know on a pretty sweet little free roll for himself of course he did have the best hand so he could have technically got more chips and doubled up i mean that would have been a likely scenario too but didn't have to go at risk and now he's living his best life through the blinds with five blinds and three is gonna See if it's enough to just stuff or if he wants to open. I mean, we, we do see him playing pretty aggressive. Ivan does have 1.5, but he is going to just go for an open, not a all-in, which makes sense. Carl shoves and gets another full. <laughs> no, just kidding. Mm -hmm. He's not getting any more folds now that the, the three chip leaders are so close. Oh, we yeah. try to bust him. Here we go. We're going to see some button versus big blind action here. You got two paint cards for Nicholas and... An easy open for Ivan with pocket eights. He's taking his time, though. Waxman, you get our re retweet out today. You're gonna be eligible for fifty bucks or no? Are you in there? Mm, I don't believe I'm in there. You gotta be in there, man. You gotta be in there. If you win, I'll double it down to that to everybody too. I'll make sure we. All right, tell me again. How do I how do I do this? You just go to hit the link in the GG the YouTube chat, or just go to my Twitter pin link. Yo, these these uh some of these Halloween costumes are too much, man too much stuff i'm seeing like the nba stuff it's pretty funny ja wick for uh ja morant that's too that's a little too much man there's this is... so I, I gotta like retweet and tag a friend yeah just, just get in the mix bro we need to let him know we're live you got Ooh, ivan with the check back a lot of money in the middle eights are good can you be the friend that i tagged jeff or do i gotta tag someone else 
You can tag me if you want. And eight's got to feel good now. Do you go for the value? I guess on the four, queen, queen, four, four, five board, I think you feel pretty good. You know, ace high, king high could call other pairs. Going to go, I mean, Ivan is a value specialist. He's going to be thinking of something here. How, how big does he go? He's going somewhere. Ivan is a t he's reminds me of Beggs, man. We got to give Begley a shout out. He's, he's really a time bank. That was who I tagged. <laughs> that that was my friend that I tagged. That's hilarious. What's Ivan betting here, Matt? Oh, how much? Mm -hmm. 290. Something that like ace high yeah, is like attractive or does he checks Ooh, it? He checks it back. <laughs> That, this is one of those ones where you're like the whole card's up, you know, it's like, oh, you got to bet. But yeah, I mean, it's a big pot. It's an important pot. 1.8 million doesn't get in a weird spot. Also, Nicholas just knows, makes such great decisions. I think that's something else in the consideration. Was, is he really going to get called? I mean, I guess Ace High would have a hard time folding, but. Pavel going to open. Matthew certainly going to play as a chip leader, closing action, 8-6 suited again, much different than three-way. And when you're sort of shorter and tough spot, ace-deuce does pair the deuce. King-king-deuce, pretty good flop for Pavel, who has the best hand, ace-high even, but he does have the deuce to pair. Yeah, I like see betting this hand right here. Probably got the best of it. You now beat all the other ace-highs. Not too worried about the king when there's two of them out there. And look at that. Matthew had plenty of equity there with his 8-6 suited and just a small little bet got in the fold. So that's a really good bet there by Pavo. And he gets rewarded because of it. Here's an ace king, sir. Good luck. Is this is Carl going with four bigs here? He's got the ace high. What do you think? Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Quick, quick, quick. He's going. Up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Open ended here for Nicholas. One big blind should take this one down. Yep. Just a little 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 temperature check. Gets it through. Two point nine million for Nicholas. Queens. Ivan. And Ivan, let's not forget Ivan smoked that ace. Two of them actually, ace ten to Kings. Would have been Pavel with over six million and five handed and Carl super short. That would have been a whole different ball game. We would have literally been likely four handed by now and Pavel with over half the chips and in play instead we have got him barreling into queens with what kind of sizing are we seeing on a three bet here i i can't imagine just calling with this hand small yeah like four less than, okay so more than half more than double yeah but really small right, 540 five, it looks like he's he's kind of trying to get that shove out of pavel 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 it sounds more He's European. Give him a little, little sophistication on that. Well, on the, he's he's got an impressive resume. You have played with him? Did you look him up? Did you take a picture? He's won some stuff. What? He's won some some definitely won some live birds and very strong player. I don't think I recognize him. He's had some some definitely some big success. Won a lot of like kind of main event size or you know WSOP fields carved up and. Done well. I think he's got in your range of earnings five or six million and won some some big big tournaments, some main events. Let me look again, actually. I want to see his uh <laughs> I forget what he's won, but I think he's won. Oh yeah, he's got seven and a half million live. Yeah. That's way more than me. Yeah. 
Well, he's, he's in there. He's grinding. Man, they're getting some, some real collision hands here. Ace, king, king, jack. So this one, the solver, I know they like that. They like aggressiveness in these spots. I could see some 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 definite wheel spinning. I mean, Pablo has been so patient this whole entire table. I'm not thrilled about uh, three betting him. I would have loved to see an overcall there from Ivan, even though his hand was smashed. You have king ten suited on the button for one fifty. You're gonna you're gonna get the look at this. You flop a royal, you might have gone broke. Wow, would have been eighty percent uh, to a royal, yeah. Oof, would have been playing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the, maybe that's why he folds it. Maybe that's why he's he's at this final table. Um. I think I would have liked to see a little bit smaller sizing from Pablo. Give give Pablo some rope. But he does have second pairs, so I, I think he could speculate for half po oh, oh my goodness. Mamma mia. That oh, is the one. The two that outer the against my Brazilian. And he's got under a pot sized bet left. I mean, you can turn your hand into a bluff catcher here with the ace king, but you can't fold. I don't think you could fold. SPR less than one. There's two spades out there. I mean, he is gonna give the. He's gonna go ahead and slip it over. He doesn't. I guess not the greatest turn in the world, but not the worst. I mean, there's 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 just it's hard to believe it. You just don't want to believe it, especially when you're dominating the other card. That is that is dirty. There's no justice, Jeff. There's no justice in poker. True. That's true. Oh, looks like Pablo's going for the small bet shove river. Can we hit an ace for the Brazilian? It's I saw Nicholas believe folded ace four off this hand. Okay, so there's one left. Not Was it diamond zero. Or what about the muck here? What if he just fuck? It? What if he just yellow mucks it like an animal? Like then it breaks the internet. Getting just six knows. to one. He's probably super using if that happens. Yeah, that's a different. That'd be a different level of of understanding. That'd be spiritual. He's thinking about shoving or just calling, and either is a very reasonable play from him. And he just got super unlucky here that Pavel hit the last of two jacks. Four point five five percent, and it is a queen royal. Ivan yeah. hits a royal. Wow, Ivan. <laughs> He, yeah, that would, it would have been hard to find a way there. But after the flop, I mean, he would have been very much enrolled in the situation. So that is a interesting thing. And what is also interesting is Carl is down to two blinds, Matt, with 10 jack suited. He's got a real customers, but they're sharing an ace. 10 jack suited doesn't fare too poorly here. Let's see if he did spin, right? He did get a courtesy pay jump at least. So let's see now yeah, if he can get Carl in action. Let's see if he can go further with this journey that he is on right now. Jack 10 suited. Definitely, definitely getting some money, some odds on here. If the big blind folds, extra big blind to Annie. Now he's back to 350. If he can just make a straight, a flush, a jack, a 10. And it is open-ended, so he's got himself a little bit of equity. Misses the straight. Look close to a nine. One to come. Carl, can he continue? Carl will not be continuing. We're down to four. I'm going to prompt that giveaway shortly. It's going to be 50 or 100. The first part of that is to hit the thumbs up. If you're enjoying yourself, please hit the thumbs up and then be ready for the keyword. Happy Halloween again. Four-handed at 4.08 Eastern. We are one hour and 23 minutes in, and we are down to four, Matt. And we have seen Pavel find his way back to the top. He is just doing what he does best. And oh my. He, is a... he got tripped against a flush draw, Jeff. Hmm. If your bet, this is your best hope for a dinner right now. This is We're you need. You, it, it's it's Nicholas versus the world for you, and and he yep. is finding himself a possible starter pack, and then he's now behind. He is now yeah, in Barney. A, a Canadian, an Argentinian, and a and an Austrian. Is that flag? Is that Austrian? Austrian. I believe he's from Ukraine though, but maybe with the the laws of where he's based. But Moldova on his Hendon mob. Oh, is it Moldova? I'm sorry. That's possible, too. I know it's, it's European. His residence is Prague, the Czech Republic. Okay. Well, Pavel's the nut flush on a paired board, and he is wondering, I, I have the nut flush. What is my opponent wagering so much with? Maybe he's got a lower flush. Maybe he does have a nine, but, you know, like, what's going on here? What is he he's thinking? He's going to get the raise in there, Matt. Very cheeky. Mm. You are puking right now if you're Nicholas. You're going to call. And you're going to hope the board pairs, probably. Um, 
the cool thing is that he's not bluffing with an ace or a king. I don't think. Uh, so, you know, and that's a great river for Nicholas that doesn't allow him to win the pot. At least it's going to allow him to fold. Um, to the river shove, which I would definitely believe is coming. Nope. See, I, I can't. I can't predict any of this stuff. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Does he bluff here? Does Nicholas turn his hand into a bluff? I don't know. I don't think he should. And it's not going to work. Pavel made a great check here. He's bluff catching with his his hand. Like that's a that's a really really good check from the queen eight of hearts. Because it's going to be really hard for you to get paid otherwise, unless I they can beat. Yeah, if you, if you're Nicholas, maybe you're realizing, wow, he did have a flush. And now he doesn't like his flush as much, right? Is that is that what you're just thinking? Maybe you could get him off of a weaker flush. And he does check back, though, ultimately with Showdown and kind of wondering what was happening there. But Pavel is up to a six million stack, and the blinds are at 3060. So it's Pavel's world. Everyone else is just sort of involved, although still plenty of play, right? 60K, big blind. 1.9 is, is the stacks of Ivan and Nicholas. So still 30 plus blinds. We got poker to play. Not a cakewalk by any means, but. Nice showing from Pavel. And you're going to get a value bit out of Nicholas if he has the 10 or jack of hearts in that situation. So you get to, you can maybe even go for a check shove with your hand, potentially. Um, I wonder how worried he is about Nicholas having a full house. I don't, I don't think he's worried. You can see the remaining players, the payouts are nice. Look at this three bet here, Jeff. I, I'm, I'm witnessing. I'm watching, taking notes. We got some European on European violence happening right now. <laughs> Little click, man. Just gonna keep on adding to the stack. Are we going to see some bets out of the ace five suited for once, or is that just not a thing anymore? Wow, he folds eight six suited on the button. That's really interesting. All right, looks like Nicholas is flapping a flush draw. Matthew has a very underrepped ace nine offsuit, and he's going to bet it. I think Nicholas can bluff here, right? No? I guess his hand's too good. Ace high is too good. He thinks he can win at showdown, but he's going to be very surprised to see Matthew with the ace nine high based on how that hand was played. Yep. Four handed queens. Ivan, man, Ivan's gotten some real premiums. Pavel going to be happy to peel here. 6-4 suited and Oof. two pair. Hello. Hello. Looks like Ivan might be a little bit too deep to to go broke, at least on the flop. It's going to take some more. And we got a lead. A very interesting quarter pot lead from Pavel. I mean, that is a good... He knows that that flop is good for the blind defender. And bad for the under the gun guy. It's such a great turn, right? If you have seven X, three X, like one pair here with a gut shot or something. So he's just gonna keep on pricing and Queens is in in uh in a really precarious position. Getting a nice price here too, though. Like obviously can't fold ace a little bit of a scare card, but actually from Ivan's perspective, sort of a brick, right? I think this looks like does his opponent have something or did he miss sort of a draw or have like a seven four or a five seven or Five three suited, just sort of betting and seeing where it's at. And Pavel now, you know, it's a great wow. He checks it though. Interesting. Yeah, I was wondering if I checked there. I think it's a really interesting check, and I, and I think that like Ivan could even value bet queens potentially here. 
but yeah. maybe not maybe not because you're not really gonna get i don't know if you get called by yeah it's player. it's interesting though the fact that like yeah if you bet that card it does look so strong right on the river if you're pavel you bet the ace card like yeah but but yeah man i don't know i mean and i do i think ivan would have called based on that run out but i don't know that that's a super super interesting and here again 10 7 gonna go ahead and put the pressure on I was running away with it. It looks like he has more chips than the rest of the table combined. It's right about it, yeah. Two pair for Ivan. And he's got this guy leading into him again. <laughs> Does pick up equity. Does have a random spade in there, maybe, you know, especially with the turn equity for a nine. Maybe he does go go a little crazy. At the same token, though, a six got the top and bottom missionary and Pavel he's is going to unload he's it. He's going to unload here. the clip, Matt. Ivan's raising this. He's got to be raising this one after after these hands. He doesn't want this guy to get in there. Oh, he just calls, which is the best play. That is definitely the best play. You let your guy keep bluffing. Let's see if Pavel pulls the trigger. You love the fact that you got the six of hearts here if you're Ivan. It helps reduce the chances of the other guy having a flush. And Go for good it. discipline. This is something you just sometimes don't see. Oh, I got the worst possible hand I could have, right? I got to rip it. But he just sort of understands the situation and just thinks that this isn't a spot where he's going to get a forced fold. And Ivan now deciding if he wants to be betting his hand, he does. Yeah. Definitely shoving that hand for value if I'm live in. You're hoping Pavel has like that one ace, ace 10, ace jack, and you just bluff catch in river. You want to go for that double up? Lines up. 35, 70,000, King Jack suited Ivan Button, four-handed, four big names in poker. I would say out of the lineup, I'm just looking at the – I'm going to cue the giveaway here shortly to, again, thumbs up the first part of that. Just seeing in terms of the player names, I would say Pavel, Nicholas, Ivan. You could throw Pablo in there, the five most experienced players. So four of the five remain. Pavel did start out as the chip leader. He has that at the moment. And here, a nice spot for Ivan as both are going to hit that – Jack and King Jack in a dominant position really can't get beat, right? I mean, he is uh, the deuce doesn't help, so he's got the best kicker. And other than an ace coming, they would chop on the kicker. He is currently Ooh. hello. Other, I'm sorry, Take Jack. Jack as well. Yes, very welcoming bet there on the flop. A third the pot, hard to fold. If you're Matthew, you definitely think there's a good chance you have the best hand with your Jack. Now you think there's a great chance you have the best hand. It goes check check. Maybe because neither one of them want to get their stack in with a queen, but I think they'll see a bet call here. Maybe even like a. How much does he bet? Like two fifty. The jack. And you won't. I don't think you'll see a raise. Oh, okay, he goes for the over bet, and then you'll just see a call. Yeah. Yeah, pretty fortunate there, Matthew. I've been catching a little heat here. He's got the queen 10 suited. He's probably going to take a flop here with our chip leader. Yeah, king 7, queen 10 suited. Fair fight. Out of position, Pavel to Ivan. Also, one of those ones you could see a raise. We saw him with the king six off. We saw Nicholas do that. I mean, I think he's considering that, but maybe a little, little different. Excuse me.
All right, ace three, six, seven, ace eight. A couple of aces sharing. Pavel also a stack where Nicholas is the risk premium shortest, though, right? He's can't really put so much pressure where he's worried about a shorter stack going out. Although this is really close, ace eight off. And he is going to. Pavel puts him to the test. These guys have been battling today. Eight six three nine three pairs king king three flop Ivan out of position here Nicholas does had the best hand pre flop and on the flop Ivan will start betting <laughs> and Ivan decides to slow down. Nicholas likely gonna be feeling better now already in a decent spot and position, but he is gonna go ahead and bet protection for the three. Vulnerable hand, a hand such as this with two random overs for six outs one time, 14% in that scenario, which is exactly the case. Does Ivan he does tank, you know, he also just might be playing a lot of tables. That's possible, right? There is a good schedule. It's like I think at some point there's is like he? times where he's He's taking a while, but but he's also very calculated. He is capable of doing some uh, off the wall, unconventional things. And it's time, Matt. Mystery hand, Matt. We're calling him today. Eight ten off in the small blind. Will this fold too? I guess that has to be the play, right? There's no way there's an eight ten spot with Oof. a button raise here, and he's playing. So let's see. Maybe this is just Ivan. Oh, clay, a, a limp. Something we see more of now on the shallower depth. So this is interesting. I'm limping in. I'm limping in with them. Okay, all aligned. Matthew is in the big blind. He's going to check back. Okay, top pair. This is, uh, you know, these are tough spots because you don't, you're not used to practicing when you get a limp like that and you go three ways to a flop. Um, I think generally, though, when you're out of position with top pair, you want to check it. And then here you're going to call. Yep. You should see a fold out of the big blind a lot of the time. And then I, I, I'm thinking about, like, what my leading range is on the turn. Wow. This is definitely a, a hand that I'm going to be checking. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good right now about this hand. And one of the great things is if somebody has 6-7, you hit that 8, you know, you don't even have to worry about it. Well, the big blind did come along, and it did check through, and then the diamond, backdoor diamonds do arrive. That's, like, a, I think a little less of a concern on the flop, right? There's that, the hands that are, and then who wouldn't, maybe not barrel, but do you, you know, at the same time, does Ivan barrel diamonds when two players I call? Have the flop? I would have liked, I, would, I think I might like a check from Nicholas because you want to get a guy to bluff and they're probably not going to call you with a four or five, I don't think, you know, but they are going to bluff their missed draws. Um, and like if you bet and someone shoves, like, they usually have like a flush, but you got to call anyways. Like they're they're not going to bluff shove you really. I would have liked to check here and 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 yeah. and just a call from Nicholas with with tough this spot. hand. Tough spot, tough spot. But I I think you know he does go three forty one into this pot size and Ivan now. I mean, if yeah. Ivan shoves on you here, you're so sick with your hand. But you you know you, you can't really fold. And if I did bet, I think I'm sizing it smaller as well. Because I'm, I want like Ace Five to call me, right? Like it's hard for them to have a queen when. Oh, I'm so good. What a, this is what a hand! Gross. What a hand we got going here. So let's talk it through. Limp, limp. First off, right? There's a yeah. limp to start. So we're a little confusing hand. I think you could fold. I think you could fold your hand here. Because, like, what are the hands he's checking on the turn? Right? He's probably checking fives full and fours full. You know, wow, we maybe, just, they maybe got, he's you know, we're, we're sweating the hand now. They showed us the hand. I don't know if by design oh, or not, but he's on a stone cold air ball here. King nine. He is ripping in light. No diamond present even. 
or block yes. her to a boat. This is a this is an insane play because like what are you trying to get Nicholas to fold, right? A ten, I guess. You got, but you got to presume he's not ever folding a ten, right? I don't know. Like my first instinct is that if you bet and they shove on you, you have to call with your hand, which is why I would have checked it. But I think this that, is a, that I, th this to me is such a fun hand because like there's this is just pure feel like there, there's no block like he's got no diamond no 10 no pair not even a five or like a whatever he's just on a stone cold air ball and you look at his limping range I call do feel him, it, you gotta call call him it's you constructed more it is all like the suited these type of hands like you know jack 10 queen 10 king 9 suited jack 9 suited sort of heavy in that range but like Avon's value hands all make sense of being a flush Probably like a, a good flush, fives full, fours full. Wait, he limped, the, but he limped the button. Maybe he even raises fives full, fours full in the button. Yeah, but the interesting part on the, the 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 diamonds, I did say though, I think that in a lot of scenarios, if he had the diamonds in particular, he would probably barrel on the turn. I think. But then if Nicholas shoves on you, you're you got to fold your diamond draw, which and you lose all this like equity. Yeah, but right. I don't think he – yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it all. i just saying I, that's just in my head. I, I understand you're right, but I just think this is uh, – this is – Nicholas also has a diamond too, right? So he's got like – he's blocking – he's got the 10. He's got a diamond. The diamond helps it's him call, yeah, for sure. The diamond definitely helps him call. Um, the 10 helps him call. Like Sick hand. This is a sick hand. I, I – I, man, and the good – I feel like the great players are all – they're also they get it right so often, but they're also weighted more towards being able to fold sort of huge hands. So I wish they didn't show the King Nine, so we could still be wondering. That would be so fun. But uh <sighs> Yeah, I mean if you think about it, like the hands he's shoving on, he has to have just an absolute bluff, right? He, he, he has he to just have it. absolutely nothing to shove here. And why would he ever do that? He's been playing so snug and smart all tournament. So I, I think I think I like folding there with the 10-8. You know, I think I like it. But I also like checking to begin with. So well, I can tell you this. Nicholas knows what he's doing, and you can just that's a nice illustration. If you ever make a wrong decision or in the moment, a spot, it you just seen it. The world's best don't always get it right in the end, too. And Ivan, again, nothing, no slouch. He is you look up that man's resume he has done a lot and he is a very competent player and he knows what he's doing as well so that was just something I had to give two titans battling and a great bluff there from from I mean, ivan it also shows you blockers unblockers this and that sometimes you just got to just rip it and and take a <laughs> take a spot like there's but no i would reason. encourage anyone thinking about the hand to to consider when they're trying to like come up with a logic for for how to play is when you bet 340 there on the river uh, what's calling you? What are the hands that are going to call you that are that are worse? Obviously, they're usually worse when they call you. Like, but what's it going to be when a hand limps like that? Like, are you going to get called by a five or a four? And maybe they just think you you have like a missed straight draw. If so, then okay, then that, that's a good reason to bet. But if you don't think you're getting called by a five or a four, and it's really hard for them to back into a queen like that, that'll pay you. Uh, I think you need to consider bluff catching, even though your hand is so good. Your hand is so strong with trip tens, but but yeah, that's just such a gross spot when you when you bet and someone shoves on you because they are repping a huge hand, and you're not beating their value range with ten eight there. So, um, so yeah, really really rough spot for Nicholas and and and, the, and a great time bluffed for for Ivan, Ivan. Yeah, that was a cool hand, man. That was a really cool hand. That might have been the hand of the tournament, huh? So far, not. Yeah, I don't think it's close. That was just a big, 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 big shove, big spot, big bluff, big moment. We got Argentina man. winning the World Cup. Now they're gonna win the GG Millions. Like, what's next? Yeah, it's it's. There's there's so many things. There's so many things. He's going to have to start acting quicker, though. He's only got two minutes and 51 seconds left on that uh, 
That time bank. Yeah, yeah, he's running a little low, but still, still play four left, four handed. Definitely warrants. I like the chess clock. I really do. I like the idea. I like it. I'm a, I'm a fan. I think it's it's very cool that you just don't need to. I think it promotes faster play in general than when you have a really big decision. At the same token, if you really think about it, if everyone used their 15 minute clock at the table, it, that'd be a lot of clock, right? You're talking about a lot of time where there's there's tanking. Ooh, queen nine suited pretty close here, but I guess what's it a little bit? What's 11? Too much. 12? Ten well, bigs is, it might eh, actually it probably is a call. It's really close. The suited queen nine. Mm -hmm. I mean, but he's second, and he's got like a million chips on Ivan, which is good reason to, for him to give it up. You don't want to risk that. But I, I don't know. I think I think in a vacuum, it's a call, right? He does call. There you go. There is a look at these men's resumes. Look at look at this queen nine just in a lot of trouble into a lot of good spot it is a good spot all of a sudden with one to come has to fade the king and it is not and he has got Ooh. nines full of eights and we're down to three and look at that nicholas has 27 million of earnings on gg look at that on the left there that is a crazy crazy stat that fanned out on the left of your screen matthew though 8.7 million in gg so three-handed he is now in second him and pavel looking strong ivan been playing well running well and he is in the final three and i'm going to cue the giveaway right now it's going to be i don't cute. regret my draft i stand by my players you know variance is a thing it is it is a thing where uh, are we going to dinner do i get to pick all right i just put the hold on real quick just put the keyword in gg poker space mat space insert your gg poker username again if you don't have a gg poker account your jurisdiction can't play gift it to a friend give it to a friend split it with a friend you know, do do what you got to do, but that is the giveaway for a fifty or hundred dollar ticket. And the good news for those at home, it's over. Is it just a hundred dollars? We got the yeah, the dinner. As you're saying, the dinner's locked up. It's a hundred dollars for the giveaway. Hit the thumbs up, insert those things. GG Poker Space Matt Space your username, and that's that. I get to pick the restaurant though, right? Uh yeah, kind of I not. I do no. this great Mexican joint. It's called uh, Chipotle. Chipotle's good. Chick-fil-A's good, it? but I'm thinking something spicy. <laughs> All right. Ace four, 10, seven. Let's see who's going to get podium position secured. Big money up top. 230, 224 next. 286 up top, man. I am curious to see who's going to be crowned the winner, and I think... I think, if I'm not mistaken, I know we did talk about it. Let me just reconfirm. If Ivan has won before, so Nick, Nicholas will not get his six. Pavel has won season two, or I'm sorry, he's not won before. He's not won before. Matthew, I think, has won once. Let me just make sure on that. Once in season two. And Pavel got a win. Season who, two. Who's that? Oh, that was that was Ivan. Ivan is one as well in season two. So so Pavel actually would be looking for his first title. I, that that is that is who is would be a first time winner. But many good results. Wow, five mil, almost six mil in earnings, and and still no no wins. He's due. Pavel is due. Ivan's got the open-ended straight draw with the 10-3 suited. And Matthew's in the lead right now with his ace high. He also has a gut shot to make a six high straight if a three comes. Yeah, and pretty good pretty good shape here. Not a very attractive looking board, though. Yeah, something to be said too about pot control but also just wow. giving up the lead he's gonna he just bet over the pot here with ace high gotta think like oh he's the big blind maybe i'll make a bet that can make him fold a four or five or a six and that aggression is gonna win him a very nice pot yeah did have does have the best hand but as we we know that that is not a guarantee to just win the pot especially at this level guys find ways to get it done and he did make sure he got it done there. Big bet, big moment. 
big stack matt they call him big stack matt big stack bbq this guy who's uh who wow who hello matthew hello. flops with the five and then it goes check check set of fours for ivan on the turn and he checks it again which is gonna get a bet and you know he's check raising this he's got to right he's got to check raise this Get that money in. Go for that double. He just calls and gets the worst river you can ask for, even though you're still in the lead. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. <sighs> Ugh. I mean, if he checks here and gets another bet... Somehow, I mean, I can't imagine Matthew turning second pair into a bluff after this run out. That's super small. Can he bluff here? That, I would be amazed to see Matthew turn his hand into a bluff here. That would be an incredible play. After this guy makes a clear blocker bet, you got to say, well, I got second pair. Am I beating his blocker range? If not, can I bluff him? Is he going to make this block bet with a straight, with an ace, with a six? Could he be inducing with an ace or a six to get me to bluff? Like, I don't know. Um, he can't really fold, I don't think. He has to at least look him up for the 90. But if I if I see Matthew turn this hand into a bluff, I will I will just lose it. I'll be so impressed. He is considering all options. Does call Ivan gonna win the pot? 2.6 million now. So call is the easy option. That's definitely what I think I'm doing there. Yep. Look at the payouts. 174 guaranteed here for the fellas. There's three left. Pavel trying to become the newest GG million champion as he has not had a title. Ivan and Matthew have done so. King nine, queen jack suited, big hands in the blinds, three handed. And uh hefty raise. Matthew's certainly gonna want to play here. Oh yeah, he might even does he ever find a a back raise there with that hand? Probably not out of position. It's on the table. Queen Jack suited, likes the flop. King nine has the gut shot over. How about a queen? Is that is that an action card or no? Greedy. That's a little greedy for, for violence. Queen Jack and King nine both wrapped on the board. Queen Jack suited has backdoor spades, backdoor straights. Got the top pair already. That's a lot. And hold them so hard to make a pair. We say it all the time. It's really true. Such a hard. I've played a lot of PLO, a four and five card. You know, it's like you start, you just get a little bit like confused, like, oh yeah, but no, making a pair and hold them is, is not easy. What are the odds of making a pair in the flop? I have this somewhere. I have it all. It's hard. It's low. <laughs> I have these stats. I have these crazy stats. It actually is interesting. It. It's... You got three pulls out of six outer, right? That's yeah. It's got to be. You got to make it like one, one and three. Right? That's about yeah. right. That is about right. Yeah. Yeah. Around there. <laughs> King nine just sort of wondering what's going on. I mean, this is this is definitely a card that may favor Pavel here. But you gotta be scared of the ten. Players leading. Matt, definitely not the top top end river by any means blocks king queen though which is a possible hand that is value so let's see what he comes with or if you check the sides yeah, the, the unfortunate thing about that river card of your matthew is your kicker no longer plays with the jack so a lot of the hands that you call you might even split the pot with but you still have a very strong hand you're three-handed you're against a very aggressive opponent so you know you can certainly find some easy check calls with the, with your pair of jacks here. Well, okay, definitely not easy, but reasonable check calls, I should say. Yep. Yep, that is going to this going to do it. Matt does take it down and we are getting a little more level. This is a blowout in chips and everything, Matt. We got like 13 million to zero in the dinner sweat. This was a clean, clean sweep. So this is this is uh the audience has got a hundred. I'm gonna pick the winner here again. You gotta hit the thumbs up. You gotta 
on the YouTube chat. In the, in the live live YouTube, you can hit the thumbs up. We will then type in the GG Poker Space Matt Space, your GG Poker username, and someone will win a $100 GG tournament ticket. So good luck to you. Those eligible, and again, if you don't have an account, give it to a friend. Eight, trip eights and an ace, Matt. This is a big, 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 big collision here. Ivan got his opponent right where he wants him, and man, if you're Matt, you're kind of like, these are one of those no defense positions. Like, how can you ever fold? But you just, you're like, what is happening? Why what would someone it? bet this much? He bet 2x the pot? I mean, that's, that's greedy, Ivan. <laughs> that's a greedy bet. But, but he, you know what? Matt has the hand that, that can, can catch that, that kind of, look at that. You let him off the hook. He let him wow. off the hook. He could have check raised there. He could have bet small, bet big on the river, and got call call. But he bet two x the pot. I would have loved to see him bluff like that. Speaking of bluffs, there's that king nine of hearts that he bluffed with to uh, to get our Swedish player Nicholas in, in some really rough shape and and win that that crazy pot earlier. I looked up the odds, Jeff, on Google, uh, a flopping a pair, and, and I was way closer than I thought I was. It's 32.43%. Yep, that sounds spot on. Great turn card here for Ivan. He's got his second pair with kings. Uh, the ace kicker is going to play with the kings and fives ace kicker, and he's got a flush draw. So you have a... a a really nice hand to catch some bluffs here. There's no need to raise. And that is the draw that you didn't want to see with the 10 of spades, but nonetheless, you still got a really good bluff catching candidate. Yeah, queen, queen six, king nine. I mean, king nine does have the had the flush draw, also has the king, so it's uh. Queen six, not really loving the situation here. It doesn't have anything going. Do we ever see a shove? This is a decent bluff hand. You got the six of spades. You got the queen of diamonds. Do we ever see a shove? Ever? Wow. Pretty hefty bet. You're definitely in a tough spot here now with the king because you get to make that bet with an ace all the time too. You got aces and fives of the king kicker, right? This is not an easy decision. Yep, and he's gonna. It's Talent, gonna work. Man, just tough. These guys are tough. This is like a highlight reel, a three-hand highlight great reel. Bluffing. Great calls, great bluffs. Yeah, he had a great hand for bluffing there. I mean, you you get the, especially like that spade, and and you just have queen high. There's a reasonable chance uh, you might hear from Ivan with an ace or a five already. These guys are playing great, Jeff. I'm seeing a lot of really well-executed bluffs today. Yeah, there, it's been high level. I mean, that, there's there's some very memorable hands. The king nine of hearts hand versus Lena is, was just savage. Like you said, just like, you know, you, you start looking around in the game. You're like, all right, like this, or I got that, or I could tell the story. But that was just like, that was just a pure storytelling moment where, where it just took away all the blocker talk, all the... All the, all the, just everything. That was just pure savage. At the same token, you know, it's crazy. Poker's crazy. I even got it in ace 10 off the Kings. Smokes an ace with like six left. And now here he is three handed getting to put on a clinic in, in certain situations. But he would just be out the door in, in a spot or two. He was getting a lot of tough spots. So he, mo he mucked tens to aces pre. He made some good folds. He was getting some pretty big hands. Ace Jack suited. We saw him step out, put in that four bet on the open with tens, three bet of, of, uh, what was it? What was it three bet kings and then he's he went big with the the 420 at like 1.4 million at the time he had so he's in there you know ivan's in there shaking and baking he's chipping up and all these times where you just see him run into it there's a lot of times he's just gonna win right there's a reason he's getting deep he has chips he's playing creative he's making moves he's making his own luck and uh you know 
he's going to sometimes get, get step into it, but that's also, you got to get there sometimes to get the chips. And then what do you do with them when you get there? That's the important part. Yeah. That bluff with the King nine of hearts and, and the fold with those tens were super impressive. And I think usually he, he probably would just three bet the ace 10 instead of shove it all in. But you know, when the guy's that super aggressive and he already shoved on you last time and you're afraid of that, he's going to four bet shove light on you and you can't call like maybe shoving is the best move. You know, maybe you get the guy to fold sixes or something. So you can't really fault them for making that shove with the ace-10. You got to pick up a nice pot if he gets a fold. Yep, four, six, four, four is just going to go for a little protection on the jack-jack five board pavel i mean these are again boards where it's just like you just think like all right six four off just no interest but do you ever check raise do you ever get saucy and this one is again really no back door it's not against six four spades he just got six four off six four back door just, straight. yeah back door straight i mean i guess there's always something but ivan getting put to the test and does fold yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just such a gross spot if you're Ivan and you get check raised. You gotta, it's one of those situations where if you, if you think your opponent is very, very likely to check raise bluff you and you're not ready to bet call, you, you almost got to just check it back and give them a chance to, to get there on you rather than protect your hand. All right, we'll see some more action here. Matthew, our Canadian, has flopped a straight draw with the wheel. Ford gives him ace to five straight, and Ivan still got sixes, which is better than second pair of fives. Easy call for Matthew because his ace high could still be the best hand as well, so there's no real reason it's a big, to raise. Big turn. Big turn card here, as we see the nut flush draw now. Ace high could also be good. It has a gut shot, and he has sixes. One of the better turn cards, right? If you just, it's less like your puns than nine. You're pretty high up. You can get value off a of five, a three, clubs, hearts. Yep. So let's see if he goes pretty yeah, big we'll definitely here. Definitely see another bet here. Ivan's feeling good about this. Both these players are feeling very good about this turn card. Matthew's going to be able to call the bet again as well, just because he could still have the best hand. He can make a straight. He can hit an ace. He can hit a heart. Um, but there he goes over betting. I mean, this spot is actually, I like this over bet in this situation. If you're Matthew, it's sort of impossible to fold. So that's the crazy part. But we said that with the ace eight, eight flop when he had ace Jack, but here there's other draws. There's the clubs. Ooh, there wow. it is. That's wow. the straight. I think, he, I think he, after the club comes in, uh, and you're Ivan, you're not worried about the straight really because you got two sixes. But after the club comes in, you could probably check. Uh, you could bet two, like maybe a third of the pot. Would be an interesting play. It's if you a bet weird a one, pot, though. Are you, shoving? are you shoving as Matthew or are you calling? What are you going to do? This is a very this is a very interesting card. The four of clubs in particular. Also having sixes, like you said, blocking the straight. You also block the flush. It's like your opponent definitely could miss hearts, which he did, but he actually hit the straight. So yeah, you're kind of in a weird one. The SPR is one. Um, yeah, I like a check, but wow, ooh, that's a heavy bet, and it, it's not. He's not folding. He's gonna call that. He's definitely looking him up. He's not gonna shove. He's just gonna call because he bet so big. And Ivan will be on a short stack. You wow. can't really give him credit to have a better hand than you three-handed. Like, he can make this bet with nines. He's value betting here with sixes, you know? Is he thinking it? I don't, I don't think he's thinking about folding, right? I don't think he can fold here. I mean, he, the this same token, though. Yeah, the six six. Is he thinking got, about it's... raising? Is he thinking if he can raise, or or no? I feel I don't like think you're he'll just raise. Crushing, you're crushing no. Ivan's value range here uh, with your straight. And uh, wow, oh yeah, he wow, what a raise! That's a great raise. Really, see, I would have just called with with. I think me too, me too. That is impressive. These guys are are just playing. 
really great poker. What's the buy-in of this tournament, Jeff? 10K, 10,000 oh. USD. Oh, my. No wonder these guys are all monsters playing for 10K on GG. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is the this is the this is the big leagues here right now. This is definitely he's, he's using the time bank is is out the door right now. He we might actually see the zero <laughs> second shot clock here. And this is and I, it actually makes me think he may call because he's like shit, I'm using all my time. I need I have no time bank now. Three or maybe he's just gonna time out. Wow, he he's folds out and he is has... what a fold. Imagine if he bluffed that. Imagine the Canadian finds a bluff there. That would have been really impressive. But pretty sick hand, and, and Matt has earned himself essentially tied for the chip lead now, as Ivan obviously is in pretty dire straits, but still available. We do have a giveaway pending. The hands up thing is over. Good luck. We, I said Jack Ten of Hearts. I think you said Ace of Club Seven of Spades, if I'm not mistaken. That was your guess for the final win, and that is a jackpot progressive as well. So that's live. You guys got a $100 ticket coming your way. You got to hit the thumbs up. Enter in GG Poker space mat space your GG Poker username. That is the $100 giveaway about to come. And then I have a $50 pin Jeff Gross Poker Twitter giveaway. Three active giveaways. Good luck to everyone. And we will have a winner. And happy Halloween as well to everyone out there watching. Hope you got it. Well, do you have any memorable costumes, Matt, growing up? Is there anyone that you like just you was your go-to for a couple of years? Or like, is there one you, you just like remember? I had a I had a go-to when I was a kid. I was always Dracula. Like at least like, like two or three years, I was Dracula. I had the uh, the slick back hair and the cape. It was pretty absurd. But I nice. actually liked my costume a lot this year. I I, I don't use, I haven't really been dressing up or going too crazy on on Halloween lately. But I decided to do something this year because I, I I went to a couple parties this weekend and uh, I was the bear from uh, the TV show. So I just okay. put a blue apron on and drew some really crummy tattoos on my arms, and I had a lot of fun. Nice. It was cool because yeah. it's the kind of costume where not many people know it, but when they do, it's it's pretty great. Yeah, I think the um, what do you call it? The the thought. That's the thought at this level too. It's just it's fun. It's fun to go out, you know, get together and mix it up. But there are some people, the costume can get real serious. There's definitely people putting a lot of time, effort into it. I respect it too, but you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not easy as an adult kid, man. I know it's my, I can't wait to get out there and trick or treat with my son, Joseph. He's, you know, you know, Joseph, he's poor. He's fired up, man. He's a ninja. He's got the full deal going a little numb. He's ready to rock. Yeah. What are you going to be? I, I got ninja outfit as well. I'm, I'm ninja turtle. I went, oh, I like, man. yeah, he's going to be so excited. Yeah, I got I got uh, James Baby Yoda request of Joseph. I don't even know where it <laughs> no came with that. Yeah, it came in the mail too. I think I got it. It was close, but I think it got here. So that that was Joseph's request. I don't know where he heard that or thought of that, but that was literally what he said he wanted James to be he's six month old. Oh, so my goodness. yeah, that'll you be. You got to show me some pictures of that. That's going to be hilarious. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. I can good. give you some costume uh, choosing strategy if you want. I, I've I've kind of put it put it in the solvers and 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 thought about it. A you good got a good, good costume situation? Yeah, well, yeah. You, you know, the main thing you want... Oh, we got a nice little river here for Pablo, by the way. Let's focus on the poker for a sec. Okay. Yeah. You just river to top pair. He's facing about a third of the pot. So I, I think we can expect to see a value raise here from Pablo. Yeah, uh, he's taking him especially up. Especially with Ivan Short. Like, he definitely get, he gets to put in, like, 800K. A 1.1 milli... These are the the trickiest spots here if you're Matthew because you want to get that value for your nine, which is usually good. But like you also get into such mind games when you bet and they raise you, it's just so difficult for you to decide when you're in a situation like this. Um, but like ultimately, like that's just a great value raise from from Pavel. You know, he knows his his pair of kings is now good, and uh, he's really hoping for a call. And it's only 20% of Matthew's remaining stack to be an overwhelming chip leader if he's right. So, like, I think you can talk yourself into a call pretty easily here with a nine. But he Matt, folds. Making great decisions exactly. all day long. I mean, that is that is definitely a frustrating river to get bet and get raised on, but he does make a good decision. All right. Costume strategic breakdown, right? You want something that's like, 
a little original. You don't want Hold the on. same we thing. We got to pause. We got to pause oh, for boy. aces three-handed. Oh, boy. <laughs> and aces and nines, a matter of fact. And Ivan, is there a version? I mean, are they just too deep, right? Where Pavel, can he go? But at the same time, it's nines. And he knows that Matt knows I, this could get this could get wild. Dude. Oh, he did just call, but Ivan is out. If Ivan shoved here, though. Okay, yeah, he's out. Man, Pavel just dodged a bullet, literally two bullets by not by not. <laughs> That's uh, a helmet. Dude. Yeah, he helmeted it. <laughs> Pavel helmet. So that is, I mean, it's, uh, he still could get take a little bit of a hit here and actually still could win the pot. Very, very possible. He is open ended now, Jeff. Not a turn you love, you love if you're Matthew. This is not your card. The Jack, you don't want to see. Lots of Pablo's range is, is looking really, really good now against you with, like, Jack-10, stuff like that. Still puts out a really hefty bet. It is – Pablo's not folding. Also, Ivan with 331K, so the 9 comes in. No play with the heart. And 2.4 in the middle. Matthew doesn't go for value on that particular river. Doesn't even think long, so fair enough. I've been so sure. I love it. If he bets, like, he might get raised, in which case, what are you going to do? And what are you going to get called by with just your one pair? Like, yeah, there, there's hands that will call you. There is. There is. But when you're three-handed and this guy has, like, a couple blinds, then... Uh, Checking there is just a very, very experienced play by... Uh, Ivan needs a 10, or he's going to be our third-place finisher. It is not a 10. It is a king, and that's a heads-up match right now. Pretty even fight. Ivan, golf claps, Negranu, Elki, some representation there. A couple of good games, good lucks. As we see, we're going to play for a 64000 62000 and change, almost $63,000 dollar heads up match so this is again no deal making available plan for the title and we are going to see a re well either a new a new champion in pavel or matthew getting his second gg million title so very exciting the money spanned out the stacks are pretty even the dinner has been settled the hundred dollars has been settled i will announce that winner in a second and you still have a chance to hit the thumbs up on the youtube chat and enter into that with the gg poker space matt space your gg poker username and the winning hand is still available today matt ace club seven of hearts, club spades for you ace club seven spade for me jack ten of hearts and let's see what's going to happen here as they are heads up. Any, anyone who you got to choose here? I mean, you're, you're out of it for the dinner. For Canada. The Give me who Canada, like? man. I've been so impressed with this play today. I mean, both these guys have been playing really, really well. But I've just seen time and time again some, some pretty solid plays out of Matthew. And the chips don't hurt. He's got an extra mil. Are we going double or nothing here for dinner? You want jungle man? Uh, double. Or nothing. We can put we can put uh we can put something else on. I mean, yeah. Look, I I like Super I like Pop game. I like his game here. We're I lo I think it's just it's just too close to call though. The chips now are favoring Matt. He is up and heads up. It's just so interesting. Ace ten, ace nine. This is close to a lot of hand, but they are deep. They're bets deep. off. Bets off. Bets off. No, it's right. on. That's I'm happy with the dinner so far, and, and I did owe you a few. So we, we're going to be cashing on that. I hope, again, at home you're enjoying. We're going to see a winner today. There is no deal. 62000 playing for the difference and, of course, the glory of the title. Lot to play for. The question is, is that money on the table, Canadian or Euros? We don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. It's spread out, and it is – Definitely going to add to the earnings of a very impressive resume. As you do get to see their 22 and 23 earnings for the GG Millions, where they finished, and then also the total. Both players very healthy on the earnings poll. The 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 very healthy. I mean, these are this is just on. Think about this, man. This would be a this is an impressive resume for a poker player for their career. But this is just on one poker site, GG Poker, with this much earnings. Very crazy. And Ace Nine going to go for a bet here. I love these rankings too, how we get to see how, how well they do comparatively. Number 34 in the world is Matthew. Is that correct? 
Pablo's at number 28? Yes. It's like Pablo's deciding whether his ace high is good enough to call potentially even a raise with that 10 of hearts. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. These guys have been really good. They've been really creative, really, really well thought out plays. But I mean, I think, I think that the, uh, I mean, based on what we've seen today, these guys, these two in particular have really just been making some outstanding plays and, and it's no surprise to see him heads up. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think this was a very, very master class final table. A lot of great plays uh, all around. I mean, we, we did see, we see, we saw full, full, full scope of play calls, bold bluffs. Very, very nice. Very, very well played. And who's going to get the title? It's close to tell. Pavel does have a winner here in this particular hand. Not a lot in the middle and also pretty deep, right? Right now we are from the, what, two hours, 15 minutes in and we are, Still heads up and deep. A lot of play in the heads up, although it can just take one hand, one cooler. We saw a couple of classic flips, queens to ace king today. Who who's our number one player this year on GG, Jeff? Do you know? On the GG millions or where? On where? Yeah, yeah well, we got these rankings I'm looking at. I lo I love the data. I love the statistics. Yeah. And uh, I see we got Matthew at 34 and Pavel at 28, right? Yep. I was wondering who we got who we got in the in the top. Did any any well known uh, David pros? Jan. David Jan was 1.7 million. Oh wow. Yeah, for the year for GG Million season 2023. And again, episode 29. There's been 29 episodes, and I believe it did start as slightly before that. There was some where it was underway for the new year. So yeah, we're. Uh, you know, cruising along here. There's, there's uh, getting towards the end of the, the the year, but big points available today. This is definitely, you know, these these guys are very strong, very high up in the rankings. But this is gonna both put them in better spots, and of course, a title. Top this 10? is actually, this is actually a chance. But they're deep. They're deep. They're deep. If only that ace was spades, I'd have a real shot. Yeah, Matt, Matt up to the 8.4 million again. I see those trickling in. Appreciate the thumbs up and then let us know again where you're watching the world. Matt and I both happen to be in South Florida right now. And Leon Sturm, I believe, number two, did win the 50K at the WSOP last year. And he's been in great form, having a lot of results on the show, showing us a, a very strong brand. And the A7 suited, showing us a little bit of moxie. The ace high turns his hand into a bluff, gets sixes to fold as the blinds do go up 50, 100K. So a little easier to do the big blinds. You know, there's a request to do that and to make them big blinds. So now you can just divide by 100K big blinds. So still deep, 46 blinds to 86 blinds. Plenty of play here, Matt. And a... Uh, heads up, man. You've been fortunate, right? Some of your biggest heads up matches in your life. You won WPT. You won a WSOP. Your heads I up record. Once. I lost a heads up match once at wow. Bellagio. Okay. That's pretty. That's a pretty crazy record. It was agonizing. I, I had to tell him the guy. And, uh, and, and he got me still. I was just printing money. I had, I had a, I had a, the best live tell I've ever had. And then wow. he stopped doing it. I think somebody told him. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. And he he reversed it. Did he trick you with it or no? It just came, played out with the hand and whatever. I don't really remember that well, but if you play that for many years. Tell. Jeff, they say if you spot a tell, don't say nothing, right? Well, I said something. And that's a lesson I learned the hard way because there was a couple hundred Gs between first and second that tournament. But you but, said something to who? You said something to the guy? Dude, I said something to my friend who's a floor, and I'm wondering if he told him. I, I, I still oh, think man. that he told him because this tell was so rock solid. And uh, it disappeared after break. Hey, this could be it. This is a three-bet big at 46, though, because peeling's not really a great option. And also, those shovings, that seems like a lot. But, man, there's a chance the cards are on their back. So he peels and hits. 
Ooh. he peels and hits the set. No set, no bet. Oh this is my. A, this is a, I mean, the king, the queen three, eight rainbow in heads up calling. You're just thinking about Vegas, the mirage, the whole deal. And you are absolutely <laughs> in trouble. This is the flop you want with Kings that queen high dry, dry board. Yeah. Pavel has the medicine to kill those Cowboys. Wow, Pavel looking to add his name to in in etch it in stone for the GG millions. And he is in a very good position to put himself in a much better position as he will likely, unless a miracle river falls, will will put himself as a two to one favorite. Gonna flip the script here. Yeah, they're gonna reverse the uh the stacks if they can get it all in by the river. You gotta be thinking value here if you're Matthew, right? You're facing a third of the pot, you got kings. You checked. He did exactly what you want. You're thinking, like, how much can I get out of an eight right now, you know, for a queen? Wow. So he's he just yeah. snapped the call <laughs> out, of his, out of his chair. He got snapped, and now he's got two outs, one to come, and we are going to be still still playing as Matt is down to four million. Whoa, what a moment there. That could have been. What, a battle. what an absolute battle this has been. And another couple real hands, and he might just for how many blinds is this? Thirty. Yes, there's still a lot of blinds, but he is going to rip it in. Okay, so wow. that's that's the cutoff. So now up to ten million, and uh, your chip leader start the day has found his way to chip leader heads up by a healthy margin after he makes the set on the over pair, pretty big cooler and heads up play as he makes top pair again. He's nearly three to one chip leader right now. And everything's going his way. We'll remind you the tweet is live. That's going to be the last time I will let you guys remind the $50 pin tweet. Just put the link in the chat. Cash, not ticket. That's giveaway out of my pocket. Into yours. Good luck. And we will see who is going to get it man is it is it possible to overturn this is a lot of momentum and he's just speeding here king eight he's betting the six four off no equity his club is not good and now does he slow down or not six high six high with the four semi bluff with the four high club draw it's no good and let's see if he's just going to keep on keeping on yep pavel is giving him the rope he's got second pair he's got the flush draw for some insurance And shot clock wise, both players getting a little lower, but still a lot of time. He is, he is, but he is speeding without a governor right now. I mean, there's really not a lot of versions. I guess there's like a few rivers where he somehow could get talked off folding, but he does just call and the ace comes on the river. And that actually, I think, strengthens his hand and his perspective. It's heads up. He's got the king. Sure. Yeah. It makes it much less likely that your opponent's going to have the ace. Um, you got a, still got a great buff catcher here. And Matthew's got to be a little steamed up after losing that big hand with Kings. So he rightfully checks it to him. Let's see if he gives up. I mean, he has six high. He cannot win this pot by checking. Um, and wow. he's going to go for it. Does go he's for getting, the, go, he's for the over bet. He's definitely getting called here. Pavel played his hand perfect. Now you click the call button. Yeah, he also has a king and a club. I mean, it's just, you know, he's got he's got a pretty nice candidate to call. I mean, it's like you said, I, I think so too. But then again, you know, he's uh he's he's thinking, what is my what am I what's my guy got here? What does he have? Does he have like a jack or a queen with one club and just bluffing? I guess that's that's possible. He's got the six four off. He could have a lot of bluffs if he's bluffing six four off here. Yeah, you gotta assume psychologically his range here is so wide to try to win this pot, especially when you haven't made any aggressive actions toward it so you know you just check your hand and and you you call i mean he had plenty of time so you could just definitely think it through and just make sure but but yeah that's a oh aces that's a but that that's a call yeah with the king eight and yeah and he's doing well, it man he's, he's going for that first title huh did he check back? Wow, that's pretty it's pretty uh pretty advanced and it may earn him a double here at least he just got to fade five outs 
twice, but he does go for a let him. I love that. I love that check back. And we are going to say congrats to my man, online grinder underscore W10. You just want a hundred dollar GG ticket. We'll get that in for you. And he is check raising and Pavel still has his man on the super ropes, but looking pretty good for Matt to catch a double here. How much you want to see here? I want to see 250. Just give me bet 250 right now. Maybe 300. Just something like 40% pot at most. 300. Nice. That's a good size. You're going to keep him for that much. I think it goes calling. Maybe he folds a river or shove. Pavel. Oh, not that river. He might get he might get the double now, right? Yeah. It's pretty bricky. No diamond, no spade. Board pairs. You have the seven. The eight's kind of a random card. Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> Leaving himself 50K. He 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 played it amazing. I really, I mean, that's cheeky off this stack depth off a limp to limp back the aces. I mean, that is the check behind. Nice fold though, Pavel. Man, this guy's a tough, tough as nails. Great fold, great fold. <laughs> you know, honestly though, it's such a great fold because off of his stack to start the hand, a lot of kings are gonna jam too, right? Yeah, I so, I agree so, with you. So like, it's even like a tougher fold there. Yeah. I mean, that fold makes the difference between 1.9 and 2.7, though, so it could pay huge dividends for Pavel, especially if he ends up having to double up Matthew again. Great flop here. We got a pair, bottom pair, open-ended. Backdoor diamonds, yeah, everything working. Queen eight off, just sort of. And he's betting into you. Now you got to wonder, is he going to call here, or does he want to put some more money in with this hand? I mean, he only bet a quarter pot, and he's shown that he's been leading out a lot in these situations. Yeah, You're gonna it's just, right you know, now, you, there's just those so many random, those two, almost all the the hands that don't connect have the two over cards that you just don't know where you're at. And this is, this is the making of a, this is it for a flip, probably going to just be, going to be three bet. And then, I'm sorry, raise, he's going to, going to yep. kick it up and likely just shove here. And we're going to see right. a flip almost certainly for a possible title for Pavel. If he can hold sixes to ace king, I know for, he just, just calls. calls. Oh, wow. 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 This is uh That's this is, so interesting to me that he would play his hand this way. Whoa. Well now if you're mad, you just kinda you're in no man's land into a very strong position. Yeah, he gets to go bet shove here with this hand for sure. Six fifty is uh is fine. You can even bet less than six fifty and still get that shove. Up, oh, but that ace is gonna let Pavel off the hook. Probably, right? He's gonna get over three to one, but I don't think your sixes can call anymore, right? Can the sixes still call, Jeff? They can't, right? No way. <laughs> no. It's too much. I mean, he, he even he he raised the limp pre. What's the what's the reason behind not shoving? Is it because the opponent still has the raise button there and it makes them more likely to call or maybe raise or like it, I, i'm thinking i wonder if like some of the bluffs like ace three or ace four ace five you have in there or something too are just like also just so comfortable post flop it's heads up it's hard to make a pair you just figure you let your opponent you know bluff 
bluff down instead of taking a flip? I don't know. I mean, it's yeah, I'm curious well, too. I, I think it, that's that. What's that? He left himself ninety seven thousand behind. Instead of I was saying here at the end, yeah, I, don't, I think that's just one of those those things that where if you do lose, you know, you see these spin ups happen. I think Christoph Vogelsang just took one big blind and took down a big trade. And just kind of one of those random things people aren't thinking or they decide, yeah, I don't want to raise. I do see people click people in though too with these things, right? Even like with modest spots, they just like put them in anyway. Um, Give them a chance sense. To, to bluff. Yeah. No, um, no, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, if if you, yeah, you just instead of just call, you push it in for the last because, yeah, you you want to like just you know, put them down there if they if they uh, they don't have it. My, but I guess that's the that's the other side of it though, right? What's the, if they don't have it, they might really fold. I guess so. Flops the nuts. Wow. King high straight. See, my worry about not shoving there is what if I disconnect my internet and then something happens and. I just lose my whole stack before I can reconnect in time. Um, yeah. That's my issue. That's my paranoia right there. Ooh, he's going to raise it. That actually, uh, uh, hmm. So, I mean, you're calling here, right? Yeah. You're obviously calling. You have the nuts. You got the guy raising you. Does he continue? Does he continue to, to, Tell this story and 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 bluff here. Here you get called. You do, I mean, I guess there's some 10x hands, right? Man, like he the, is going for this. You are blocking straights, right? You're blocking. Oh my god! What wow. a lucky bailout. He makes the seven card straight, and they're gonna chop this one up. We get to I'm watch thinking of poor Joseph out there on the trick or treat streets without his daddy right now, and that was just these river cards. We were we were flips away, you know. This is this is intense. We want to see we want to see great play, but I know there's this is this is a big day, Halloween. It's a U.S. big holiday. I don't know where you're watching the world, but this is Halloween, man. This well, is then, real uh, stuff. Let Pablo and Matthew know, and maybe they'll go all in for you. It's only <laughs> it's only like eighty thousand difference, right? 62 but who's counting it's a lot of euros too it's a lot of they're playing for for euros canadian dollars a lot it's a lot of brazilian reais and this is quite a unfortunate river as you said pavel still knows he can't lose here right his opponent doesn't have ace king but still it's uh it's gonna be frustrating when he sees his exact hand he had him really just just completely completely yeah. out of of sorts on this one and you know the canadian is getting a good laugh out of this he's like ooh. I got lucky. All right, ace eight, seven three suited. We are seeing the min raise a little deeper now, thirty plus blinds. But again, interesting. Some hands to people are deciding to limp or to raise to min raise as ace eight not loving this flop seven three though sort of involved with that board but doesn't make a pair either again we were saying about 32 and some change percent right matt hard to make a pair i think you get the green light to bet your seven three now after he checks back right maybe i feel like that's a decent spot or you can slow play it and make your straight You're definitely going to see a bet out of him here. You can't imagine your guy's possibly going to check to the river and bet a, a five with the club. So you should see like a decent sized bet out of Matthew. A little over half the pot for 250000 And Pavel's had a decision with his ace high. He's probably going to be able to fold this one, given the way the action was played. Oh, he called. Information call. We got to raise up on the button with the ace nine off. C bet from Matthew. It's going to take it down.
And here we go. Aces on the button against a Jack-8 suited. Definitely a defendable hand here. Sorry, someone's banging on the door there. Um, aces, wow. What a, what a life. And we got a bet. We got the bet. Is he? He might have some reverse float equity here. He's got the Jack-8 suited. He's, he's three to a straight flush. You know, maybe, maybe you want to splash around. He's going to win. Yeah, five six jack six. So ten million, three point five million, five six. Got the gut shot, jack six in the lead. Do you got ninja stars, Jeff, with your costume? Do you get like a prop you get to throw? I That'd got some. Cool. I got some stuff, man. I'm I'm ready. I'm really ready. I'll tell you what, kid. It's uh, it's the costume game is exciting. It is. It is. Well, it is actually fun. It's fun to see candy, how much the kids enjoy it. What's your candy carrier though? You, you got the options. That we I used to go pillowcase when I was a kid. But now they have the plastic little pumpkin things that you can put the stuff in. Yeah, yeah. They got, yeah you, what, what's the, the move? You go backpack? Pumpkin. The real pros go backpack. You're just hoisting 50 pounds of candy. You know, you walk Too up to that man. house, at, to go walk up that house at midnight, yeah, these, and they yeah, just got no. the bowl out there that says, please take one, and then the kids just take the whole bowl and just dump it into their bag, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's he's got the little Green Lantern. That's that's he's got a limit. You know Amelia, she's not letting him. No backpack. There's no no one's picking up a backpack of candy. This is keeping it keeping it classy. And we have not yet seen. We saw the one I guess sat kings to threes, but there's been not a ton of collisions here. There's the ten deuce off. So all right, some discipline. Did not just calling everything. Queen eight suited. Pick it up. We see again a lead. It was it was getting close to over for a second. Pavel now has given relinquished a little bit back to Matt. I want to I want to put out like vegetables for trick or treaters, like like or like potatoes. You know, just a bowl of potatoes. Take a potato. How'd you feel if you went to a house and they gave you a potato or like an ear of corn? <laughs> I like corn. And this is the ooh. Look at this. The wheel draw and the trips on the ace five five. Could we see some chips move in here? And there's a bet. Start with the bet. Pavel's got to love this spot. Oh, yeah. Is he just going to call? Probably, right? I mean, Matt, I, Matthew I, has I, shown, I, he has shown that he's willing to barrel some of these boards. But if you're Pavel, maybe you want to just get stacks in with an ace. So you yeah, also, I guess it. if you got the 4-3, four, 4-2, four, you might be check-raising. The same token to flat the 4-deuce there, when you have that hand, is uh, it's less likely your opponent's got that type of wheel draw bluff. So I'm not as in love with that call. Ooh, very sneaky check. He goes check-raise, and then he checks. I mean, a lot of times, if he bets again, Matthew's folding out all his non-ace hands, right? But he checks the trip fives, and look at that. He got 493,440 chips. Adam Matthew with his four high after checking. That was really, really well done here by Pavel. Yeah, and, that, and the player needs a three and a three only, and he's going to check raise, and that'll, that'll check do it. Check raise him again. Oh, you're, you're just sick after you get check raised twice in a row. The meat rack, the Begley. That's another Begley reference, the meat rack, going for the triple check raise. Very hard to execute the triple check raise, but he got two-thirds of it. Yep, well done. I mean, obviously we can see that – calling there in the turn would have paid him out a lot more but if matthew has that ace you get the check raise and you probably get another call and you might even get a stack on the river so uh just really really smart to check raise flop and then be aware enough to check the turn yeah a couple of jack jack, five. jack six here there it is Five ball, little five, five. A little something that matters. Those pots are important. Dental floss. How about that in your trick or treat bet? Like you just give away dental floss. Here you go, kids. You're gonna need this. Three eight queen three. Nothing very exciting for either player here. No player making a pair. There's there's your. One out of three, roughly zero. So two players there, both missing. No one's still with the pair on the turn. Queen high way ahead. Pavel decides, good time to bluff. Sort of see where he's at. Maybe he has the best hand, maybe gets a better hand to fold. 
Anytime a bet can accomplish multiple things, seems like a good good time to do it. Does limp in now, 7-3, deuce 9, and 2-pair missionary right there, 9-deuce. Time is low, Matt. 32 seconds left on the clock. So, Matt, that could come into play if he does get his stack back into order here. And he's going to slip it again with 2-pair. And Pavel says, this is a good time to bet. Now, Matt has a decision. Did he close his eyes and call, or is he... Going to start pushing it up. Maybe his opponent found a king. Maybe his opponent has some draw. Or do you just close your eyes, call, and let them do what they were doing? I mean, in this particular case, his opponent has 0%. But he's going to pounce, and that will end it. He wants to get that double. You got to think to yourself, how many times is Pavel betting here with a 0% equity like he was there? Probably a good amount, but it's just too... Uh... It's too appealing to be able to try to get a double up with your two pair. You can get paid by a pair of kings, maybe even just a pair of nines. Yeah. Maybe you get a maybe you get a, a draw to, to shove all in on you. Jack eight, four nine, no one with anything. Jack high, a million in the middle. Maybe Pavel thinking time to try to win one. Same time, he's got the chip lead, kind of everything working. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need to get too out of line, but the, hey, that is a good bet, and he is back up close to eleven million, and big, big, big swing there, really. Nine ten, nine three. We do see the min raise again. I don't, I don't know what's the differentiation factor on limping versus min raising at the stack cutoff, or is it just more of a, uh, a, a based on hand strength there? What, what, do, what do you think he's leaning off of? And then we see the limp now for Matt off his stack size. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be difficult to like exploit any specific tendencies uh, here with these two players. They're both very solid, very balanced. So you just want to have a balanced range of hands that you're going to min raise, hands that you're going to limp. Uh, sometimes you have hands that you min raise call, hands that you min raise fold to a shove. Um, it'll depend on a variety of things, right? Like how well does your hand flop? Do you want more money in the pot? Um, I don't know. You just you usually just want to want to come up with a good balance strategy for the situation. Looks like uh, Matthew ended up making a flush here on the river with that deuce of diamonds. Yeah, good enough to call. Does have a winner. Here we go. This is action. This is action. Ace eight six nine. Both players connect. Middle pair, top pair, both with backdoor stuff, clubs, straights. And, and these are both strong eight. hands. When you're playing heads up, and you have to play your two cards, they both flop the pair. Top pair against second pair. Um, this is certainly a, a hand that you'll see a couple streets of value. Neither player yeah, loves yeah. the jack. But, you know. It's okay. They still have. I think they still both feel pretty comfortable with their holdings. Yeah, this is Matt though. A bigger decision here, as he calls, would basically be setting himself up for the river you know, with all. You know, to call there, you're sort of uh, saying yeah. I like it enough to call the river. So he does make the right decision in the moment and fold and do six off. Is he going to be limping or folding? Does fold one of the worst hands you could have in poker? Ace ten suited. Pavel shows it probably over eleven million here. Trying to close out on his first GG million title. As we mentioned, Matt does have one, and the audience already won the hundred dollar giveaway. Appreciate everyone hit the thumbs up again. Matt Waxman alongside Jeff Gross. We're going to play to the end. Sixty two thousand and the title up for grabs, still available. And here, gut shot and two overs to the bottom pair of Matt Deuce ten. He has got 20 seconds on that chess clock there next to the left of his Canadian flag. So he's also at a bit of a deficit. A lot is stacked against him in the moment, Matt, for him to take this down. Yeah, and you're definitely going to see Pavel bluff this hand. He got the low gut shot, so you have some equity. You're not going to win at showdown. This is a good hand to bet twice for as a bluff. 
Um, and Matt's in a tough spot. Matthew's in a tough spot with the with that bottom pair of deuces, but you could certainly find a call. I I definitely imagine we're going to see a bet here out of Pavel. Yep. Almost the pot. Wow. A dyslexic pot bet. We got the five and the seven switched around. Never heard that term. I like that. This is, this is, uh, this is actually pretty, pretty, this guy's tough, man. I'll tell you what, Pavel is tough. And the fact that Matt is thinking here, well, look at this. What? He's bluffing with his hand. He turned his deuce into a bluff. Wow. I don't, wow. So, okay. So why would you turn your deuce into a bluff? Like, do you think you get him to fold a king? Just a king there? I don't that's that's serious. Cause he's not bluffing you with better than a deuce, right? Is he? I don't think so. Sick hand. Either way, very sick. Well played. Well reasons all all there. That is wild, man. That is wild. That is an absolutely unbelievable thing. I, I got, I got, I have like a whole line of notes and hands to review for today. I've got literally a spreadsheet of, got timestamps and everything. This has been, this has been a very strong final table, man. I am impressed with these guys. I really, both players, Matt, both, honestly, both players have played world class today. So it's like really hard yeah. to call it. You're playing against the, the whole world. People from all over the world putting up ten grand to play an online tournament. You know you're gonna you're gonna run into some really really sharp guys, and uh, it's no surprise to see some of the plays out of these these two today. Man, six figure payday for the top four, top five. That's nice. That's a nice little score there. Nice, nice amount of buy-ins as we see seven, ten, three, six. Bottom pair again. Matt in the lead and Pavel relentless, just going into a instant bet. And we are officially out of time. If you're Matt, you are on that zero second clock. Matt, you're seeing it. Matt is up playing, and now a gut shot. The seven ten. Does he continue? Based on prior play, we can see Pavel does generally do that and he does fall to pull the trigger and gets the three to fold might have had a big ask to make a nine fold but but what's up jason parker a lot of familiar faces in here adam den good to see you i am excited to be here we are gonna play to the win and it is gonna be it's coming up i promise you one way or the other i mean even if, if matt can get back up the blinds have gone up we're sort of hitting that level of inflection where it gets very serious very fast. Ace 10 suited Jack 3 off and Pavel though, the favorite for sure right now with almost a 4 to 1 chip lead. Right about that, right? A little more. Yeah, I mean worst case scenario they both have 50 big blinds. Right? That's the deepest it could possibly be at this point. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. But heads up, you know, that could that could go quickly. Yes. Jacks, three, four. Goes for a big raise. Three, four gonna get off cheap there. And then one of the benefits of limping is when that stuff like that with the absolute trash hand that you want to try to get in cheap, you just don't lose the extra blind. So he does execute that well. Here we go. It's suited Jack and an ace five. Pavel may think this is enough hand to kick up and he just goes for the whole enchilada says hey if you got like jack 10 or you know something playable but I got ace high and I'm going to shove here and blinds are up again so 71 40 we're getting into danger zone for Matt queen eight you know the computer hand Matt queen seven a little better there queen eight off than queen seven and you will pick up that hand slightly if you ever heads up that is the average dead middle hand if you get dealt you can that's sort of the where to oh, speaking of on the on cue there it is queen seven jack nine what do you know slightly ahead gut shot first middle pair queen seven driving in position Havel could have some check raises some some continues i mean he does call 
makes sense. Maybe your opponent shuts down. You get to try to take it down or even just have the best hand. Yeah, I like that check back by Matthew. You can't really stand the heat from a check raise, and now you're going to induce Pavel to bluff his missed draws on the river. So hopefully we see a bet from Pavel and a call from Matthew, and then his plan went pretty well. Here's the bet. Now all you got to do is hit the call button. Your kicker doesn't even matter. He's got three, three seconds with the clock, two, two one yeah. does find it. Well, We're still battling, sure. still well, chipping up three million to ten million. Nicely played hand. The computer hand, as was mentioned, is in there. The next hand, and here we go. Deuce nine, three's probably limping again off this stack with that holding. He Rip does it. it. Threes. All yeah. in threes. Yep. Deuce there he the goes. Whole bit. The whole bit. Gonna push it in there. It's one of those times that Pavel knows, okay, you got a, probably got a low pair or just a bad ace, but I can't do anything. Jack Deuce, Deuce five, two modest holdings. Deuce five in position, actually a decent chance to win this one. It's interesting to see him limp Deuce five offsuit because, you, you know, it makes you think that maybe he doesn't have really a range of hands he's folding on the button, maybe seven Deuce offsuit. Yeah. But if he's got the Deuce five in the limping range, you know, that's pretty interesting and Rightfully so, he's he's able to use his position and and make a real cheap bet to win the pot. Is this all in material? What do you think? He's nope. five three six. It it qualifies, but three six into a all of a sudden interesting. Both players like the double like gut the shot for Matthew. Double deucer of six gave him a straight, and Pavel's got bottom pair of threes and a five will give him a straight. Probably yeah, getting sure here. there's that one key action card that would be surely trouble for Pavel, but he is still winning and a four comes. So now the three feeling even more comfortable and ace high also can't feel so bad how the hands play. That's not the best hand. I think he's liking his chances. So see if Pavel goes for a value bet here. Probably can with the four pairing. That feels like a good card to do so. Might even go big. Well, I mean, if you got the three, what do you want to get called by? Ace high, but if yeah. he has ace high, there's a good chance he probably shoves pre-flop. So I think with the three, you got to check back here and just. Well, yeah, well, I get, you're, you're right with the ace taking the aces out. That there's not many ace highs. How the hand played, that's that's yeah, true. exactly. So I like the way they played. The, I like the way both players played that hand. Really, really smart. Here we go. This is action. Fives is an easy shove here, and queen jack might be enough to call. Yeah, but you're also just, I don't know. I don't think it's enough, really, is it? 25 big, yeah. He finds the fold. Take it down, Mr. Matthew. King 5, Queen 9, two modest hands. Both, again, qualifying above the starting Queen 7, and the 9 does hit. So, man, Matt, Matt really really sticking around here he is not ready to to go anywhere he is contending although our friend pavel has had the chip lead for the majority of the the table from start to finish little stretch where i think he was not but he has really put in a masterful performance and again the king arrives though hello rivers him 900 but is it enough to million. value bet is it enough for pavel to put a value bet in Oh, no, he's going to lead with the nine. Interesting. Okay. There's definitely enough to call. Here we go. This has got to be it, right, Jeff? This has to be the all-in time. He limps. This is going to be... We're going to see five here, yeah? I think this is the one. Five. He's you got to call. You limp the eight, nine, two, two to fours. To ace call. nine. Four, four, water, Matt. Can he take it down? And oh, that is going to be hard. Why? He needs help. He needs a four or a four only on the river, else we will continue. He's a two-sider, Jeff. That's a two-sider, and it's hearts, but it's not the four. Wow. It is the five. Wow. What a sweat that must have been. We're going to continue. We are going to continue. He was 50% after that squeeze to win it with a two-outer. He got the wrong one. He got the five of hearts. And this hand also looking favorable for Matt as he has got the worst hand, but the better draw in the 7-9 suited, just a stone whiff. 
How'd this much money get in, Jeff? Uh, there was there, the boys are playing now. Open three bet call, and then he gets to see bet that that seven four. When you three bet the seven four suited, and you get you flop the flush draw, and you get to just continue. That's so nice. It's a good feeling there. And just like that, we are dead even in chips. Yeah, that's actually, we're battling. It's for a title. This is for a GG million title, 62,000. No one's rolling Trip over eight. here. Trip eights for our Canadian. He is on quite the heater, Jeff. He is heating up. I think the 9-7 is going to find a check raise. Oh, boy. Things get a little out of hand. Does Pavel have another one in him, or is this one where that's like that's enough? He's he's also done this with the with the value, right? He did this with the ace five five. He check raised and he check raised twice. So now he checked again, maybe thinking he's trained Matthew to be afraid of another check raise. But little does he know, Matthew's the one with trips this time. Couple of pairs. Jacks for Matthew, sevens for Pavel. Two pair now for Matthew and a gut shot for Pavel. He's gonna need a seven or a nine to win this hand. Ten will not do it. They both have two pair now. But the Canadian has a better two pair. If he values, surely he could probably get a call. He yeah. does value it. Don't think it's asking a lot to fold here. Yeah, that would be that would just be too much. So Pavel now flipped the script again. We've seen it both ways. The Kings don't forget versus the threes where he set mine, hit the three, got the double. It was about this before, and though the blinds have gone up, so it's a much better position for Matt. But he also has zero time bank. So a little bit of everything going on here. A lot of things to consider. Blinds are big. Shot clock got to be a disadvantage to have no time. It's actually incentivizes Pavel to play very fast because he doesn't want, he gives that extra time for his opponent to think. So when he doesn't need to think, he should go fast as we see a seven and King six. And this is also not a good spot for Pavel as top pair versus the middle pair. And this is pretty troublesome card too. It's going to make him like his seven more. And I think if he starts betting, maybe protection versus two random overs with the seven with the ace kicker, got to think you're doing okay here. And he does that. That's big. And the king going to welcome that, especially in this particular holding. He has to fade a ace or a seven. He does it. Likely just going to slip it over again. Yeah, Pavel will check this back. He's got plenty of showdown value. He's not getting called by worse too frequently. This is an easy check back for Pavel. I don't think he should be value betting here. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, he no, is for... right. And that is going to be a value bet. Called. This is a value bet by him, but it's not going to work. What? Well, uh, wow. Uh, uh, that was, I mean, did, did he just he run out of out? Did calls? he actually time out? Or is he just, is this? That's not a I mean, fold heads up. You can't fold that hand heads up. Uh, he just, he timed out. He timed out. He played his I hand. I guess, but he had top pair and knows he's got five seconds. So I don't know. I mean, did he? I I highly I would bet that he was wanted to call there and timed out. I, well, I did just say the time bank, you know, it, it does a lot in coming into play. That definitely is is a disadvantage for that exact reason in a spot. I mean, that would be the difference between Pavel being on like a million right now and all essentially out the door, and now it's a it's a ball game again. Yeah, I would love to know if he if he meant to fold there, but I I. I I, I don't think he could play his hand with top pair in that situation. Yeah. Check and that play like is, that. Is, a, is a great bluff catcher, and and you just want to check and call. If he beats you, he beats you. But there's really not much else you could do. This player is way too capable for you to check fold there. And um, yeah, crazy, crazy spot. King Jack deuces. King Jack though, a little more activity on this 
board than deuces i mean deuces still firing out and king jack suited gotta believe can just have the best hand and has some good turns too so it does call that's a semi brig brick but again if you're deuces and you get called you're not loving that you're not loving it i mean both players like you know could easily think they they have the best hand um i think yeah i, I was gonna say i think i like a a, a bluff here by Matthew after that 10 comes in because uh, his range is going to have a lot more of the draws than Pavel who's going to be able to bet those in position a lot easier bottom pair versus open ended Yeah, four deuce certainly in this particular hand. One of the better flops you can have. You don't make a pair, but you have a strong open end, and you're gonna get a lot of folds. But the three actually pairs in backdoor spades likely, you know, gonna gonna be curious. He has no time. This is another one where it's close, and you're kind of worried. Yeah. But I think something interesting to note is how frequently Pavel has been check raising heads up. That's a really cool thing to establish when you're playing heads up that you're you got a really uh, large check raising frequency because you, it, it might deter your opponent from c betting as frequently um it's just interesting to look at the meta that these players are, are using i don't know if he's always like that or not but he has been check raising a, a wide range of bluffs and value since we started here we go this is it right well, it's it as in, I mean, it could just flip the, the script again. Actually, though, it's likely it's going to be a big bet and a call, though, right? He's got Jack-10 suit. It doesn't need to, not going to rip it in, but. Yeah, I mean, it depends if you think that your wow. opponent has, like. It, it depends if you think your opponent has, like, a really wide three betting range where you could get a fold out of, like, an ace seven. But your hand just flops so well with Jack-10 suited that, and you're in position that it's, like, it's just really nice to just take a flop because look at this. You can get open-ended. Put in a nice raise here, and Ace King, what can Ace King do? It's, hard, it's Ace really King hard. He doesn't to have play. a club, a jack, a ten. I mean, the, the, it's 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 not fun, but uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, you're right. You can't really hang on, but it's sort of like, man, it's one of the worst flops you could have. I mean, that's true. Yep. And even though his equity was probably ahead, uh, that jack ten suited just had such better playability, which is like all the more reason why it's a really nice hand to just call and take a flop with your opponent. Okay, this they're they're getting in. He just open shows. <laughs> Look at and now he's beat. He's shocked. Tens to fours. Can it continue or can there be a miracle? We're we back to about even. If it can hold the river again, ten versus fours, it is a six, and that is going to be a new game once again. The blinds did just go up, so we are going to be again get a little shallower. Seven point seven to six point two. And we go from what could have been one of the quickest shows ever to a uh, three-hour show, which is, listen, I, I will say high-level poker. Uh, other What's than it being Halloween, I'm thrilled to be here. And, you know, I, I wish I, I do want to do a little trick-or-treating. Where It's getting dark out there, man. And, and But this has been a high-level, very, very strong performance, and I'm happy to be here. I hope you guys are enjoying. This has been two titans battling, trading blows, a lot of back and forth and heads up. So been very, very, very impressive play today. I'm say it again. What's the record, Jeff, for the longest uh, GG Millions stream ever? Uh, three and a half, maybe, something like that. There may be a little more, actually. Probably 345. I mean, it's already, we're at three, right? And this this did seem like it was going pretty fast. Yeah, we lost some players real quick. So we need another hour to beat the record, and then trick-or-treating is just not Up looking great door. at all. Ooh, Jack Four suited the Robbie. She was a guest on recently. It's a suited though. I that's actually my favorite poker hand. Jack Four suited for the first year or so I played. True, not off suit, but suited. Robbie did the uh, the commentary on one of these. Yeah, she was. She's been on the pod and commentary. I had a good time chatting with her. I think she's been through an interesting run, right in poker. I mean, that was that was a crazy situation. That whole deal. But we still don't but, know. We still don't know what happened. It's just one of those we'll never know. 
I mean, the Jerry, fact that Perkins and put out a bounty, and I know he's on Joey, and they were talking about it, and like no one ever came forward as well. Like I don't know, man. I just feel like in those situations, like stuff comes up. There was a big, big bounty on the line. I don't know. You yeah, know, a quarter yeah, million sure. or something offered. It was an interesting offer. Uh, there's always the chance that the bounty doesn't get paid because of stipulations and whatnot, but. True. Uh, no, I'm not saying. I'm saying. Listen, there's a lot. There's a lot to to de- to, to to break down there, right? There's a lot of stuff all over the place. It's a, exactly right. We will probably never know. You can make your own judgment opinions. I mean, like versus the Apostle situation, which every seemed pretty conclusive, but yeah. that was also kind of anticlimactic and bizarre, right? So someone said he was playing somewhere recently in a tournament. I saw something like a couple months ago, but yeah, yeah. been some wild stuff in poker. It's it's uh, there's definitely been some wild wild situations yeah absolutely um poker is definitely good for some some, some of the good and the best time. you know that the thing is i think all these like kind of wild deals get really blown up in the crazy proportion right so it's sort of like uh yeah it's sort of you you hear about these things that don't seem so great but at the end of the day poker is such a beautiful great game and you know it is uh it's all good. You know, there's, there's uh stuff happens and I'll tell you this minute 30 on the shot clock. I don't think we've ever seen a double zero. We're heading that direction. If they can keep trading blows, like this could be a zero, zero shot clock. And that would be something that would definitely be something. And Looks like Matthew again, straight. Yeah. Four to eight. Probably enough to find a fold. Yeah. King six, Jack ten, and the Jack arrives. Matthew in a comfortable lead. All of a sudden, King high though definitely could be thinking good, but that's a big size. That is a big bet. A lot of draws: six, seven, nine, ten, three, four. All their gut shots involved. King six, definitely. Wow, he does decide. Oh, hey, we got a call from that over bet. That is surprising. Do not time out, Matthew. Do not time out. You cannot wow, possibly. Pavel calls turn thinking he's good. Now the jack comes, which now if he's thinking, you know, like that is definitely a card that. Right. Thought he was going to turn. If you're Matthew, this, nothing has changed when that card comes, right? So right. Pavel is going to call you on the turn unless he's the one that's on a draw. Um, he's going to probably call you on the river. Little did we know he only had King high and that was just too much heat to take, but oh, flops is straight. And then, uh, yeah. So I love size him sizing that really, really big on the river when he hits the trip jacks because the board hasn't changed much. So, so if he thinks he's good with a low pair, he's going to probably call you again. Sneaky check back with the nine five, and now Pavel drawing to the low end of the straight on the turn. Unless he that check back on the flop could that make him? Wow, he is he's got the check raising bug, man, and he is checking into a zero percent win right now. And the river, Aaron, is, it's, it. it's over. He's shoving this. He is shoving this hand. He's got the five high. You cannot win the pot. There's three million out there. He's got to shove this, right? Surely he's got to shove this. I, th- I think you're right. And the, the mat you check back might earn him this title by this, this exact hand. Pavel has shown the discipline to slow down in spots. But here on this door, he's saying, I could have four five. I have nine five. You know, I would play like this check, raise, turn. And now he is, okay, goes for, he just finds Small a way to not put it bet. in. That's a cool bet because let's say that Matthew has a hand like Jack Nine of Diamonds or something which beats your hand, you might still get that hand to fold and you still have to bet and not just give up with your five high. And you could maybe have him fold out just some high card hands. 
and win a nice pot. And look at that, he's still in the tournament. Well, if he did show, has, he would have been out, as we know. This has flipped all around. There's a the computer hand, decides to limp, not shove. Three, five checks back. Both players miss queen high in the lead. Small bet should do the trick. Does bet. Three, five suited is disappointed that the hand has had some more. He calls the float, man. Look at the float. Calls with five, three suited. Wrap it on that three card straight flush, four diamonds. Hits the three now. Does he bluff? Does he think he needs to bluff here now with the three? Or Okay, it looks like a little block he's making. I mean, Matthew's just going to fold. I might even just call one big blind there just to see what the heck he called me on the flop with. Just be like, yeah, whatever. One blind. Let's see it. Yeah, 30 minutes from now, probably won't be still going to tournament. So if he wants the info, he's got to get it. There is a delay, of course, you can see. But as it stands... King four, queen 10. Ooh, getting close. 160 blind. He's going to shove it. King high, though. King four off. Not so attractive to call it off. Yeah, he might need like a king eight, probably. King nine. And as you can see, the stacks are getting much more shallow, so there's way more limping. This, when they're like this big got... deep, be lots of... Lots this of has got the makings of it, of it here. The Jack nine, Jack four. I mean, this is even one you could consider checking back a weak top pair, but not the shallow with the top pair heads up when you're short. I mean, this is now uh, looking like Pavel is <laughs> going to have a hard way to get out of this one. I mean, this is like absolutely. If he's still in the tournament after this hand, Jeff. I he might deserve to win it because this is just a complete cooler. You got top pair, can't win a pot against the guy like. I'm putting my money in here with with the jack. But it looks like Matthew's setting up a bet and a shove on the river. That's going to be enough to shove. There's no four line for the straight out, so he's going to shove all in. Pavel's got a call. He's going to be getting three to one here with top pair. There's plenty of missed bluffs. That, this has got to be it. If he folds here, I'm going to be amazed. Yeah. He calls, and that is your champion. Matthew is a two-time GG Million champion. Played well, ran well at the end, but really a absolute killer instinct performance from Matthew Stump. Absolutely special, Matt. Thank you for coming on today. Any any takeaways? I mean, Pavel played world class. He led the entire way, only relinquished for a bit, then got the lead back heads up, and then it flip flopped a bit. But tell me your thoughts on the on the play today and anyone that stood out. Yeah, I mean these two guys played incredible they definitely deserve to be their heads up you gotta imagine that pavel keeps on going at it he's going to get a title sooner or later it just comes down to so much luck at the end with the card distribution uh shout out to ivan from argentina he made a sick bluff with that king nine of hearts and uh all in all yeah this has some, been some really great poker in the gg millions uh 10k jeff yeah, I appreciate the time. I know you got a lot going on, and I do appreciate you coming on. We'll have you on in the future again. Again, Matt Waxman has been on my personal podcast, one of my very, very close friends for a long time. Great player, great resume, and we do appreciate that time, and we'll be seeing you soon. And dinners, we got we got to, we got to chalk them up somewhere. I've got you. I owe some. You owe me some. We're going to go somewhere nice. We're going to have a good time, and we will see everyone back next week on Tuesday, same time, same place. GG Millions, episode 30 will be next week. Another big guest, big prizes, big names. We'll see you guys then.